King alcohol has many forms by which he catches man. He is a beast of many horns and ever thus has been. For there's rum and gin and beer and wine and brandy of logwood hue. And hawk and pot and flip combined to make a man look blue. He says be merry for his good sherry and Tom and Jerry. Champagne and Perry and spirits of every hue. Hey, what? Blind pick tour. Blind Well, we are coming from a... Uh, well, yeah, we're doing a different place. So we're in the Casa de uh, Casa de Fresh. Yep. All right. That's right. That's Not right. in the garage this time. No, no, forty <sighs> degrees. We're like it's like a thirty-seven degrees, something like that. So I figured Pussy. I'll let you guys come inside tonight. <laughs> we're beer drinkers. I mean, oh, come yeah. on. We got beards and oh well, then never mind. Not you two anymore. <laughs> usually you look. Usually by this time of year you look like a fucking lumberjack. I, I know. You haven't I done think... that in a couple of years though. Well, it's because of COVID. What's the COVID got to do with your beard? Wearing a mask. Oh, okay. And. It's a pain it's in the ass. Don't. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Why is yeah. Why is it a pain just, in the ass? I don't know. I just I don't know. It's a pain in the ass. Okay. All right. But you haven't had to wear a mask in a while. I do at work. Oh, do you? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Yeah, I still I'll wear them in stores and shit sometimes. Why do you have to do it at work? Just, we just have to. Oh, uh, okay. Corporate, even if you're even if you're policy. vaccinated? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Well we got away from it and then I don't know. It came back for some reason. <laughs> I forget why. Uh, <laughs> I, there was there wasn't any reason they just, just they just changed things. Yeah, just like the fuck with us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, I guess. But uh, yeah, anyway, oh, so a hey, l- little bit different today. I mean, I'm always always beer drinking, but uh, have a lot of musicians on. We've un- we've actually done this once before with uh, with a filmmaker, and we do have another uh, uh, Mr. Tony Walters who's making another uh, a film, and uh, independent filmmaker. And you've done you said this is your first feature length, right? This is me directing my first feature. First length. directing, okay, okay. okay. Who else is with us? And uh, Corey, actually, I work with Corey, and Corey, uh, he's in a, he's in a, a, a band that's uh, touring the USA right now. <laughs> yeah, I think they're playing Elmer next. Yeah, Elwood, Elwood, in, Elwood Indiana, yeah. in January. So, All right. okay. Yeah. Are you so kidding or are you serious? No, I'm sorry. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, he's not touring. Well, yeah, the way yeah. we're like, oh, I work he's, with you know, but, uh, but there Elwood. was a band. Okay, but, I, thought, uh, I, I thought you worked together. We do. Okay, we do. Yeah, we together. Yeah. Andy yes. has a band. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. You were making it sound like you were in the band or something, or uh, are you a roadie, you know? Nah, I'm trying out for triangle. Groupie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good triangle players deal. are hard to find. They right? are. <laughs> yeah. He plays a yeah. mean cowbell. Yeah, I know. I like to do my <laughs> solos, man. I don't want to be bothered. So when I when I cut into a solo on my triangle, I just better back off and Woo! turn that bass down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, Tony, I'm before you, you know, talk about the movie you're doing, let's just kind of talk about you and, you know, Totally. Uh, how you got into this and what you're doing. <coughs> well, I got into this, I mean, you know, in high school I used to shoot little short films with my friends and mostly uh, skateboard videos mm-hmm. was kind of the thing that got me into my love of a camera, I guess. And then uh, after high school I thought I was going to be a rock star and did the whole band thing. I was a lead singer in a metal band for a while, just screaming a lot. And uh, we were... <laughs> We were playing a lot in Indiana. I mean, we, we were, you know, all over the state. We were, you know, doing pretty well. But then creative differences, I guess, you know, band right. broke up. In a um, metal band? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can scream better than you. But um, <laughs> You're not screaming at the right parts. After that, it was like trying to find a piece of art that I could do on my own. So I started playing around with, um, like, making YouTube videos is what yeah. it started with. It was just doing uh, movie reviews and video game plays. And then I started, you know, I was having fun with that. So I brought some friends on to help me out with that. And then one thing led to another. Um, I met actually my current wife. I met her. I met her in high school, but we kind of reconnected through doing this right. YouTube stuff. And then uh, a friend of mine, Dan Murphy, he makes horror movies through HM&M Films. And he asked us to come help out on one of those. And that's the bug bit me then. Really? I mean, we helped on a movie called Blood Moon River where uh, me and my wife, Rebecca, we both acted in it. Um, and then I helped run sound and kind of helped out on the editing side of things and then helped out on the behind the scenes stuff, right. like putting together some documentary things for it. And just the whole package of like releasing this Blu-ray, just getting because we came in right at the tail end of that movie when they were about done with it. They just kind of had some reshoots that we came in and helped out on. And that I got bit by the bug. And right. so uh, I made a short film very shortly after that. We made a short film uh, starring Rebecca and Dan. And then uh, I wrote and directed that. And then the next thing I know, I'm being shipped off to uh, Las Vegas to shoot a movie with Troma Entertainment. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So uh, we shot a movie Uh-oh. called Kill, Dolly, Kill that's not out yet, but I hope that it comes out in the near future. I'm, right. not, you know, I'm not really sure what their, what their plan is with that necessarily. 
but that was like the first big movie project that I'd been attached to, right. and that was a you know ton of cast members. It was a big thing that I was like, why did who why did I get picked to come film this movie? But um, <laughs> uh, so, you know somebody saw something in me. So right, nice. then uh, yeah, since then it's just been movie after movie after movie. I've just been working on everybody else's stuff. Right. Uh, last year we released uh, my wife directed a movie called Idol Girl. <clears throat> and uh, you know that was a, a big project for Rad Entertainment, which is the company, the, my, like my company. But uh, it was a big project for us because it was kind of the biggest movie that we had done at the time. And now we're jumping into a, an even bigger movie right now with yeah. uh, this movie called The Undesirables. Undesirables. Okay. Now, there any issues with uh, working with the wife and filming and directing? And no, I mean we we uh, we butt heads for sure. You know, like it's you know it's easy to do. It's, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, we have a very strict like kind of chain of command on set mm -hmm. so if you're the director it's your creative vision whatever you say goes um, when I work with the director any director including her uh, you know my, my job is to capture their vision as, right. a, as the director of photography as like the cinematographer I'm there to just do what I can to get whatever's in their head you know like mm -hmm, out right. into a picture so I'm just trying to better the movie and I, I will make suggestions when I see fit otherwise I'm just trying to capture their vision and sure right. I butt heads with any director you know if I think something should be done a certain way but ultimately they get the final say and if they disagree with me and they're very firm on it then that's that's fine right. but I always I've got a lot of experience and I've done a lot of these movies so I work with a lot of first time directors and I like to just you know I mean I'll give my two cents when I think it's necessary right. but otherwise I'll, you know I sit back and just do my job and you know just do my best to capture what I think that is right. that they, they want Hmm. I, I would think they'd be kind of, I mean, you know, Corey being in a band, you, you get that kind of the same where you, you know, if you're, especially if you're writing, I think you kind of want things to go a certain way and you, you expect things, to, you know, what you want to hear. And then, you know, then you have to have, you, d you do have other members. So, you right. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in, in our band, uh, it, it's kind of just commonly accepted that one guy kind of is the main guy that has more ambition than the rest of us. Yeah. But when it comes down to like, creating you know whatever it is you're trying to create it's it's definitely a group thing but you do have to let somebody be kind of the main like tiebreaker or whatever right. because otherwise you'll just get stuck you're not gonna go anywhere yeah right? yeah it's called a project manager yeah yeah <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> no, shit. no i mean yeah i mean it's because they're well it, it, it always feels like an uh it feels like because when or at least you know when we all went to school and stuff it feels like group projects does it, does it ever feel like that to you? Like, you know, it's you got all the one guy who's trying really hard. You got a few uh, others that are kind of and then you got a jackass that just isn't pulling oh, yeah. his own weight. <laughs> yeah, There's, I mean, and you're like, dude, you're not dragging us down. I guess I'll have to do your part, your part, too. But I mean, I've always had that little I'm not an art, artist at all. But, you know, as far as project management, I do that stuff. This Someone's got to be in charge and delegate out responsibilities and, and you get the project done at that point. Yeah, so, right, I mean, yeah. but. I always thought art artistically, I thought it would be a little different, though. That would be a lot like, more I, collaboration, yeah, think, yeah. really? Or, uh, or does I, it really depend on the band? There, there is, and, and, you know... In the movie, I guess, the, too. You know, as the as the project um, goes on, mm -hmm. some people leave, some people go, and the dynamic changes and all that sort of thing. So the the who is running it at the time, at least with a band, will change over Correct. time. Yeah. I'm sure you've run into that with the band stuff. Probably not as much on the film thing. That's kind of... Well, the film thing, it's it's different because it's it's a it is a collaborative project. You have a ton of hands, a ton of artists involved mm -hmm. in the movie. I mean, everything from you know like just the, what the picture looks like, but then also you have sound and scoring and and just like you know sound effects. You've got uh, just art direction, wardrobe, uh, you know the writing. You've got. You know, we've got propaganda posters that kind of litter the world of this movie that we're working on that just kind of set the scene. And right. like, I've got, you know, two different artists that created those. But like, is there one above all, though? Is, is, the, really, I mean, the director, is that the director? The I director mean, is, it's, yeah, it's their creative vision. Okay. So it's it's they're the one directing every single aspect of all these other artists to, to get what's in their head out. And... Uh, but it's not, it's not the writer though. It, 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 wouldn't it be the right? That's why always well, confused me on the director writer yeah, thing. Because it's the writer act. who wrote the damn but thing. I, I think <laughs> but I think they have to, I, I think right. they have to believe in the director to give well, them leeway to see with, to with do with the film. I would think. Yeah. Well, with this particular movie, I didn't write it. Right. With this particular movie, I had a vision off. I had a story idea. Sure. I pitched it to a writer. Okay. He wrote the story, and then I had changes. You know, because like I'm trying to get he. He's just trying to capture my vision sure, from a writing standpoint. Yeah. So you but, had the seed for the idea and mm -hmm. then worked with the writer 
writer to kind of develop it. Exactly. But he kind of had free reign to do it. 100%. I like to work with artists that I trust to be able to take some material and run with it. So I gave him four pages of just like, here's a treatment. Here's like the beats of the story. Here's some scene ideas. Here's the characters. Here's their names. This is the story. And then, but he turned that into a hundred pages. So like, he, there's an element to, uh, to the movie that is the, the kind of more of the sci-fi element sure. that is that there's not been a child born in the last decade. Right. And that was not in my notes. That was something that he brought into the story to kind of help make sense of the stuff that I had written. Mm-hmm. And I loved it immediately. It was like, that sounds perfect. It's exactly <laughs> like, a, a, why didn't I think of that kind of thing? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so b- this movie is now a different movie than what I pitched to him because it was my idea funneled through somebody else's brain. You know? Sure. Right. No, and I, and I get that. So, yeah, I, I can kind of understand that because there are things I don't know how to do, but I know the people who do know how to do it, and that's my – I'm like, uh, you know, I try to do that. I've had to do that with, like, my resume a couple times. It's like I know what I do during the day, <laughs> but I need someone who can write it and make it sound better. I'm not a writer. I don't know how to write this stuff into something I could hand to someone else and say, this is the kind of stuff I know how to accomplish. It's, it's, yeah. it's like marketing. You know, right. Okay. Some so people suck at it. I, I always thought I it was a market little, myself yeah. very well. I always thought it was like a little different that it was always like started from the writer standpoint, you know, and he pitched the script, you know, and then they found, because when you watch a lot of these shows, like I like watching the Netflix, you know, the movies that made us, it right. always seems to be a, a writer who's out there hawking his wares. Mm-hmm. Well, th- that's um, the case a lot of the time okay? too. Okay. But um, you t- look at movies that like James Cameron directs. Mm-hmm. I just took his master class, and one of the things that he talks about, and it w- was kind of what spawned me moving forward with this movie, was that he has an idea, and he will write a treatment and give to a writer. And he, okay. he's worked with the same writer pretty much since Terminator, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. um, he's That's all- why all the movies are the same. <laughs> 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 but but he's, he's not, it's not unlike him to write 20 pages okay. of, like, yeah. here's a story that's 20 pages, here's the idea. Yeah, so cool. I'll, he's like, if your writing is not your strong suit, write a treatment instead. And I was yeah. like, okay, so that's what I did. I just wrote okay. a treatment and gave it to this it makes sense. No, right. and again, it's just it's me learning about that kind of industry, you know, and, and even bands and stuff. I'm always curious on how the bands get together and write because you may have the guy who's the lead singer and the writer, but it doesn't mean he knows drum beats and this right. and what to add. So you've got to you got to have input, I, I'm guessing, from some. But then again, there are some of them who are just fucking geniuses right. and can compose the whole thing by themselves. And they really just need people who play the, play the instruments because they don't have Get eight hands. Frank Zappa, and, <laughs> yeah, right. Prince, yeah. you know, or something like yeah. you know, any, you know, those guys that, that can just. A Prince can play everything. Together. He just can't. Well, do yeah, it all but he can't do it all at the same so time. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he just doesn't have eight hands <laughs> <laughs> to actually play all the instruments at the same time. But I'm sure he could go in the studio and do like Ray Charles used to do and just play this. They yeah. come back, play the other part, come back, sing the other part. <laughs> and I think he has. I think he has. Yeah. Yes, I think. Yeah, sure, he has done a whole album with. He's done everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, Ben Morrison has done that too, and they played every you know, every instrument on the album. And ben Morrison, pretty, yeah, the first uh, Foo Fighters album that was all just Dave Grohl on absolutely everything. I just yeah. list, I just finished his book today. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw something about that though with his old drummer and all that. It wasn't technically originally supposed to be him, but they ended up replacing the old drummer uh, tracks, yeah, yeah. and that I, became the rift between the original yeah, drummer. I've read, read about that. Yeah, you know, he, it's like Dave came in after the fact and replaced all the drum tracks. Or but something. Dave doesn't remember <laughs> it that way. He remembers they came in and they had him do something, but you know, it wasn't he? It but was, then he asked the guy, and it's like, you know, and then it just blew up right. or something. So it's, it's, it was funny to see them both remembering it completely different. Yeah, um, it was a, it was an interesting story on them. Don't talk that he hates Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big Foo Fighters I'm fan. I'm just a Dave Grohl fan. I, I, you know, I'm the same. I like Dave Grohl. I think he's an amazing guy, and I like what he's doing, and he does a lot for the music, you know, industry. But I just don't like the music. I don't like the Foo Fighters stuff. You know, I just think it's, it's boring. And I don't think anybody would know who it was if it wasn't for Nirvana. They wouldn't. Foo Fighters wouldn't be. Yeah, all the songs. If they get a new song, I'm like. That's, that's tr- not the one that's, that's been true. out for the last I, 10 years. I remember when the first Foo Fighters album came out, I, I instantly just refused to listen to it because I was like, no, this is the drummer from Nirvana. Like, it, yeah. It you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I, yeah, the first song came out, I was like, all right. But then, I don't know. It just does. It sounded like the music sounds safe to me. And just yeah, it's, kind it's, of right. it's, it's safe. I like pop rock to me. I don't, yeah, it is. I, yeah. I like Dave Grohl's drumming stuff. Like, yeah. I like him yeah. in the. Yeah. Uh, uh, Queens of the Stone Age album that yep, he's on absolutely. is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, them Crooked Vultures is an yep. awesome. Yep. Yeah. Really? So you good. like that? So you don't like Them oh Crooked my God. Vultures? No, they should be so. They should sound so much better than they do. <laughs> for, for for who's on that? True. They I should mean, sound so much better. The stuff I listen to, the early stuff. I mean, it just sounds like ass. <laughs> <laughs> it just it sounds off key and off beat. I don't I don't know what it is. Maybe it I, was the singer. I, I just it I was. Mean, if you get, if you get down to it, they let. I mean. 
Led Zeppelin off beat and off key a, a lot. On oh that yeah, stuff. but yeah. just they did it in, yeah. an ar- in an artful way. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was. Not, I'm not. A f- I had not been a fan of them Crooked Vultures. <laughs> I just. I. You know. Just. I didn't get it. I thought they should. I, I thought it should sound better than it did. I would say that probably a lot of people didn't get it because they only did the one album and that was like 2009. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had a buddy showing it to. Was it you? Was it you? No, no. it was somebody else. But yeah, they were showing it to me and it's like, yeah, no, nope, not that good. <laughs> but uh, uh, you you're filming. What do you? How's your your film style on? Or do you have multiple you're trying to get into? Or do you have a certain style you like to? Well, with with. With my film style, really, I mean, everything changes depending on what director I'm working with because I'm, I'm always trying to capture their vision. And um, on the last movie that I did, the last big movie, it was called Parallels, which is a movie that I co-produced, and I had a lot of input in the creative decisions made for that movie. Or that, that doesn't always happen. But for this one, we, we were, had been working on it for about a year. Then the pandemic happened. So that gave us an extra year of pre-production, which we never get that much time in these kind of movies. So the movie, that extra year that we got, gave us, I don't know, the movie's so much better because of it. We had, we changed actors, the whole, like almost all of our main actors got swapped out oh, over, wow. over the pandemic just because people got new jobs, they had, had changed what they wanted to do with their lives, like it just, you know, gave people time to think about what they wanted to do. You're right. And this movie, this project just happened to be not what they wanted to do, which ended up being kind of a blessing to a degree because we ended up the people that we ended up getting attached to it were fantastic but as far as the visual look and the style of the movie and just the pace of it all i had a lot of creative input in that and i think that that movie i'm grateful for that movie because it helped me start to find my style more right like in photography i'm I'm also a a, a, i love photography i almost love photography more than i love video because like the ability to capture a story in one frame is so much more of a challenge and I like that challenge a lot. And I was a photographer for a newspaper for a couple of years. But um, it took me a long time to find my style in photography. And now that I kind of honed in what that looks like, that's bleeding over into my video right. work. <clears throat> and, uh, but my, this is my first time directing. And I definitely have a strong visual art style in my head. And it's going to be a challenge to capture that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to... We, we, we haven't gotten onto the technical aspect of how we're going to film a lot of these scenes yet. Because right now it's just finding funding and casting the movie and and i don't have an assistant director right now so i'm i'm, I'm taking a, a lot of of that like scheduling and like doing all these other things that normally your assistant director would take right. on uh so right now i'm doing the business side and the art side so normally your assistant director would take on like the business side of everything the project manager side of everything right. and uh, allow the director to continue working on the art side of stuff so now i'm doing i'm juggling both things like right now uh, our indiegogo kicks off on friday so the this, 19th oh, this fr- 19th okay yeah so it's uh you know for for me right now that's all that's all is on my brain right now is mm-hmm. getting everything ready for this crowdfunding getting all the artwork ready like all of the just getting the, the actual page built all of our perks designed and ready to go so people can actually get a visual of what these look like figure out what everything's gonna cost everybody like we have a good idea and have had we've got I got a big dry erase board that's got all these notes all over it but this this week is just implementing all that stuff and getting it all ready it was supposed my deadline that I have on my calendar was f- this past Friday to get all that done. <laughs> and I don't know when this episode's actually listening, but hopefully by the time you guys are hearing this, I've already completed all these tasks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. We'll put that, we'll put that out in check and, and we'll put that out in the thread. We'll check, hey, did you finish? And then you can comment on it. I think I actually have that Parallels movie in my prime, uh, in my prime watch list. Oh, yeah. uh, I thought it was a different movie that, I, that you, you were talking about. You won't have it yet. It's, there's, not, there's it's a, not out yet. There's not out yet. The parallels? I, no. I swear. There might. There's uh, a movie called Parallel that you might have on. Ah, uh, maybe that was it. Yeah, para- okay. Parallels is. Uh, uh, it's that one is being edited right now. So it's, okay, that's why. Yeah. All right then. Well, I'm not the same one. Then. No, <laughs> it'll probably be on Amazon Prime at some point. I imagine probably by next fall. What's I don't want to. I don't want to put words. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to speak for other people, but I just imagine that. I, how, how does that side of, of the film industry work, especially when you're doing the independent thing? The distribution side? Like the side? distribution side. You know, and on the music side, they have uh, services that you can go out, and then they just do all of that work for you. Is there similar type things for the for the film thing? Yeah, that's, the distribution stuff with film is something I've been trying to tackle for the last few years as far as, like, what's the best way to go about doing it, especially, like, like profit-wise? Like, what's the best way to get your money out of it? And um, it's kind, it's it sucks all around, really, as far as like the level that we're at trying to actually 
make money with it mm -hmm. to a degree. Uh, you know, it's like usually we make enough money to kind of fund the next thing or at least get the next thing rolling. But it's right. like, um, but to find, you know, distribution is hard. We do have uh, some distribution companies that we've worked with in the past. Uh, Wild Eye is one that we've got a couple of movies on. And through them, uh, you know, we've had movies on Amazon Prime and uh, you can buy it on walmart.com and, and Best Buy and all the major outlets. Like, it's all there. But, like, getting on Netflix is, like, just kind of an impossible thing at, at the level that we're at. But, I mean, it's, it's not impossible. We do we're, – we're getting to the point now where we're meeting people that can kind of get us in that direction. But – uh, Netflix, for example, has um, there's a camera stipulation with uh, what they require. You have to have a certain sensor size within your camera, uh, and the camera that we usually shoot on is just beneath that sensor size. Mm. Uh, dis despite the fact that that camera is fully capable of everything that Netflix can offer, but they just don't want to put that camera on their list because it still falls within a consumer price range and they want to keep it just out of the hands <laughs> of the consumer price range, which I wow. kind of understand, but um, size, ma that, that size, sounds, size sounds matters. Like corporate film yeah. America just yeah. Yeah. doing yeah. stuff to keep people from yeah. having access well, of to course. certain For this movie that we're doing, I'm jumping that ship I'm, I'm i'm going we're we're leaping into a new camera we're, we're doing the whole thing like we're, we're making sure that we shoot it on a, on a sensor size that doesn't limit us a platform to, to put it on size matters i can't everywhere I can't imagine that <laughs> the, the, the audio industry is has always been so different where when like even the first switches to digital first happened it didn't necessarily sound that great but everybody mm -hmm. embraced it because it made it more accessible yeah so it's it's interesting to hear that on the film side of things it's it's like it's not quite the same as far as like it's, technology adoption and that yeah sort of it's because that cameras now are really like consumer cameras are starting to get really really good yeah especially with their color profiles and that's kind of where it matters but they're getting really really good at you know creating flat color profiles and the black magic i don't know if you guys are familiar with cameras at all but uh, no uh, black magic but yeah i hate I camera <laughs> <laughs> black magic is that, is that a weed <laughs> <laughs> black magic makes a uh, they make a camera that they've they've made it for years called the pocket camera mm -hmm. but uh in recent years they've made one it's the pocket 4k and now they've made it like a, the bigger brothers to that like the pocket 6k and the pocket 6k pro but those all three of those cameras are the sensor size on it's just too small for what netflix is saying is good enough but it's a 6k uh, yeah. Cinema camera, oh, damn. but it's the it's but it's within like a I think the six K Pro is like maybe it's around like three thousand dollars, and they think that's too cheap of a camera, and they don't want they just don't want to look at everybody's stuff. They're like, ah, oh, now everybody's gonna make a movie, and I don't want to see. They don't it. want to look at everybody's yeah. iPhone, everybody's iPhone movies, and, right? And uh, yeah, oh yeah, I shot this on my iPhone Pro thirteen. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, no, nah, I don't want to see this. Yeah, yeah. But you think Netflix would be able to spin off or pull a sec or create a section for? indie filmmakers and and independent filmmakers where you really just you're just trying to get your stuff out there you know obviously the monetization kind of like music yeah I mean, you can pretty much put your music out on every platform very, nowadays yeah, very um, easily very easily. without a problem but you think the the netflix would still want that in order to f at least from a um uh a marketing or or public relations standpoint to foster you know, independent filmmaking and things like that that don't have the budgets of the they used to. Studios. They used to, and I think that that's when you know when Netflix was really competing with Hulu. Like when when the streaming services were there was just a couple of them. Mm -hmm. They were really competing mm -hmm. with each other. Netflix was buying up anything and everything. They were right. they were they were buying as many ideas up as they could, and that was like kind of a prime time during that competition. Now the market's so oversaturated that as far as the indie side, the easiest place for us to get our movies is Amazon Prime. Because you can, Amazon Prime is, same with like writing a novel or anything else, like you can self-publish kind of through Amazon sure. Prime. So mm -hmm. it's, it's super easy to get your stuff on there. And then also uh, you can get your stuff on like Tubi, um, all like the free streaming services. They're, they want anything and everything. So th those are all easy. The foreign market is pretty easy to get into mm -hmm. uh, with the streaming services because they have all these weird ones like Midnight Pulp and... You know, mm -hmm. it's just like tons of those free streaming services that yeah. show weird, I mean, like grindhouse movies. Yep. I just, th I didn't think Netflix would have that because I've gone through the Netflix list and there's some shit on there. <laughs> I mean, some shit ass one star fucking movies. I mean, <laughs> there's I haven't watched it yet, but I heard it's great and somehow it's got like five stars now. But I've heard it was like fucking Velocipaster or well, you know, and and Jeez. you know, and like uh, <laughs> Jesus, uh, you know, it was like Jesus, the Z Jesus zombie hunter or whatever. And I've seen. But I'm like, there's shit movies on there. How are those making it in 
just because they used a three thousand dollar camera instead? No, v- I mean, v- you know what I mean. <laughs> so I I'm don't like, know. <laughs> I, I might, I might, I don't know that Velocipaster is on Netflix. I, I, I know it's it might on, be on Prime. It's on Amazon, I know it's on yeah. Amazon. But I mean, Prime. yeah, and that's where you start to get. I start to get lost between which service it is, and that's fine. But I know there's shit movies but on Netflix. Velocipaster <laughs> is through Wild Eye Distribution, who's the company that we have gotten movies done through. Oops, sorry. Yeah, we love that. <laughs> movie. <laughs> we did a screening of it the other night. We loved it. <laughs> well, I've heard good and bad things, but I mean, what I mean is that movie these sells the title. Yeah, concept, a lot of people have watched it. Just yeah, to oh, this guy, guy, this guy turns into a Velociraptor. I watched the trailer because I've got friends. That's what I was going to ask: was the marketing on that side is how do you Get, yeah, it just gets lost in the noise. Yeah. There's so much like ha- ha- it's it li- it's kind of a lottery like for, with a lot of these grindhousey kind of mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of them is is your movie title can mm-hmm. sell it real hard if you get like, like doing kind of a grindhouse cheap movie like Velocipaster is one of those like one of those movies that uh, like just it's it's a lottery thing like like Wild Eye is buying up you know everybody's movies trying to do you know trying to you know see what's going to mm-hmm. work what's not going to work mm-hmm. I mean they do a lot of work on the back end they you know they they'll re-edit a movie if they think that they can, you know, they can fix the pace of your movie. They'll change your movie poster out, like make it look better. Just trying to make they're they're trying to sell your movie. Yeah, but they are kind of playing the lottery in a degree, just trying to see like you know which ones are gonna do better. Right. But movies like Velocipaster, that's a catchy ass fucking title. Right. Like like <laughs> like you just see that, and you're like, what the hell is that? I gotta watch that movie. Yeah. Um, Stephen King just tweeted out yesterday. He tweeted out, Shark Exorcist is a movie. In the movie Shark Exorcist, I have friends that are in that movie, and they're like, "Holy shit, Stephen King just tweeted our movie!" <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but like, everybody knows that they were making a ridiculous movie, right? And now it's gotten now now it's being rented like crazy because Stephen King just just blew it and, up. And I guess that's what if you if you have it's it's marketing or uh, networking. If you yeah. have a right person or a right influencer, and that a lot can, of luck, I think. Uh, you know, yeah. can tweet out something, and all of a sudden everybody's checking it out, and your your uh, numbers there, go there's up. There's a whole frame. The algorithm of fit, Sharknado gets, that has happened. Yeah, for yeah. Fun, yeah. 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 That makes, <laughs> fucking movie. That made like three or four movies. Right. I made like three one. or four. Is there a fifth shark now? I think now? so. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. I thought Tara Reid was dead. <laughs> before that. She is. And Ian Ziering. Is he dead? Enough. I thought he was dead too. So, yeah. you know. But I got, I got friends that made a movie called Don't Fuck in the Woods. That movie was pirated over two million times. And if people would have actually bought that movie for like whatever it was, like yeah. nine dollars. Like he'd be a millionaire, like, wow. like through some, like he he he's like kicking himself every day because he's just like man, like a, like yeah. pirated so many times just because of the title. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I, I wonder if it's the same with. It seems like uh, the music industry for wit, for a bit there with the technology, is like oh, this is a great. There's you know so, um, all these platforms now for for music to go out on and in bands to be heard that never would. But now it seems like. It's it's like you were talking about. It's overloaded now and it's flooded. They were now it's it's back yeah, to the same where it makes it you know, it makes it hard going like, out trying to get played on the radio. You, know, yeah. you can't get heard again because there's just so much there. Or even almost, even just being a fan and trying to go out and find new things. Yeah. Like there's so much stuff out there that you have to sift through to find mm-hmm. the stuff that you know Some grabs pe- a hold yeah. of you. Right. Some people and, like and, the and, hunt. And, and I'm sure the I'm sure the film thing is yeah yeah. That's, well, I mean, because I mean, we, we talked about this with Chris, uh, the same uh, things being overloaded, but also. There's so much stuff to actually right. find, but you have to enjoy the hunt. Right. Because, uh, yeah, it will just overload you and go, fuck it, just listen to Foo Fighters. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's never happened. Alexa, play Foo Fighters. <laughs> hey, Alexa. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make your house just... <laughs> I'm going to set up I'm gonna set up his Alexa so I can just drop into his house and just start playing <laughs> Nirvana and Foo Fighters on loop. <laughs> Burning it down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me personally, as a fan of movies, I feel like overwhelmed by how much content exists right now. Because I'm a big MCU guy. Like I watch all the Marvel stuff. I really do. I love that stuff. I've been a comic book fan my whole life. Like yeah. I love that stuff. Is it cheesy but, and stupid sometimes? Totally. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yesterday, you know, Disney Plus did their big launch, and they announced so many new TV shows, and I was just like, God, it's too much. I don't think I can keep up with all this stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna care moving forward. And maybe it's because I'm getting older and I'm too busy. Like I used to play video games all the time. Now, yeah. now I buy video games and don't play them. Right. <laughs> I, I, I ended up selling my uh, my console cause, or giving my console to my nephew because I was like, nah, I'm not I'm not really playing this anymore. Yeah. Plus, all the influx of, I mean, I'm watching foreign TV shows, Squid Game for God's right. sakes. I got into <laughs> it's it's actually really good. It is really good. The only the, and the only frustrating about some of those is you. A lot of times I'll just put on a stupid show while I'm working that I don't have to pay attention to. And you know, yeah. obviously, the storyline's easy to fucking follow, so it doesn't really. But then, uh, then there's some of them where I'll get on and go like, oh, "Shit, I gotta keep, I gotta keep watching, I gotta keep rewinding," because I'm like, "Oh, I actually, gotta pay attention to this." And like, 
but there's such an influx yeah. now of foreign movies coming in through yeah. Netflix yeah. And, uh, or foreign TV shows that everybody realizing there's some good shit out there if you just read there's if you if you I'm read the uh, you know and unfortunately the 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 close ca- the captioning is not the best on you know on the translations on so you are losing something in it but you know can't all listen to Korean. You know, can't all learn Korean just to listen to a TV show. <laughs> but there's so much more of that, not not just our stuff in, in the U.S. Tomorrow, I'm actually filming a scene for a Japanese indie movie uh, that is uh, takes place like... In indie? Uh, <laughs> okay. so it takes place... Is it a Japanese indie movie or a Japanese <laughs> indie movie? It's a Japanese <laughs> independent film. They're from Japan. And they've gotten a hold of us to, to kind of cameo my production company in the movie because we've, awesome. we've just made friends with them over the years. And uh, it's like uh, we all get to play characters within a virtual poker game. So, uh, you know, we're all, we all have lines, but we're all like supposed to be like rich billionaire poker players. And uh, so we get to, we get to <laughs> do like, that yeah. tomorrow. Uh, perfect. Right up my alley. I know how to play that. <laughs> <laughs> I love independent movies. And I watch them probably more than – because especially the Hollywood. And I watch a lot more British yeah, TV and, and, and a lot of foreign movies because I think, I think they're better than the Hollywood shit. I think the Hollywood stuff now is just so – just, it just it seems so watered down now. Even the big – even the Marvel stuff, it's like – they're kind of cool, but then I'm after one or two. I'm like I'm done because it just seems so, it just seems so boring now. It's just I, I watch action and that's but like, that's the point. But I love some like the, some of my favorites in independent. I love independent horror films because I think some of them are better because they don't they don't have the budget to do you know all the gore and shit. So they have to make the movie scary you know, psychologically, and I think that most of them are better except for that, until Blair Witch fucking happen uh, and, and they just fucked it all up. yeah that changed everything jesus that was awful found, think, found footage horror yeah, films yeah. oh god that was awful i'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm so mad on this but yeah. you know maybe you guys are play witch fans but i couldn't stand no. that movie I, mean, I, I like a lot of the horror i love independent horror movies and uh i, I think that's why i think they, they have to do more to reach you than you know just throwing splatter I th- at you then. i think that the cool thing with independent movies is new ideas mm-hmm. and the, the thing with hollywood stuff and you know I, I i i can be you know nuanced and talk like all these like super artistic movies and things like this whatever i'm also a huge fast and the furious fan i'm mm-hmm. a huge marvel fan those movies are extremely for like just formula movies you know i right. mean they're just but they're, they're pumping out a product they know what they're yeah. making they know they know they know how much money that movie's gonna make before they release it like they they know exactly what they're doing with those with the independent like independent movies it's just people kind of a lot of people with fresh ideas new takes on things trying to tell a story the problem that i see right now especially in independent horror at least in the kind of i don't know the 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 level in which i work in is it seems it's a lot of people emulating what they see in in hollywood right now and we're starting to i'm starting to see a trend of just like slasher movie after slasher Mm -hmm. movie after slasher that people are making which is fine and i've worked on a lot of these movies and you know worked you know and a lot of my friends have made really awesome slasher movies but i'm waiting for people to branch out of that and and you know start to do something different i have a couple of friends right now that want me to help out on some projects with them that have some really cool ideas and i'm like yes let's do this because it's something unique and yeah. different and so, yeah it's, it's, all, it's all it's all slash slash jump scare yep. slash screaming girl running person slash jump scare yep. uh, maybe, yeah, maybe some boobs here or yeah there. there's gotta you gotta <laughs> throw boobs in i mean that's that you know and then the slash up the boobs or something the you boobs know? will always the, the boob movie. thing started with you know be be horror movies when we were like that all true that all started at you it know. did, yeah. Well, it had it's much people, more humble beginnings than where it, it is today. It's yeah, people it paying homage to that era of, right. of cinema. But the homage is done. Come up with some new shit. Like, holy crap. I mean, well, that's not what even the corporate. Right I know. They're, yeah, they're everything's regurgitating a, everything, everything that everybody regurg- loved when they were kids. Everything right now, so. is. I mean, for God, God, Halloween Kills was awful. Oh, my God. It was Thank such you. a horrible yeah, fucking I movie. Watched, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, I haven't, watched I haven't seen Halloween 2018. I but I did see Halloween Kills because I had some friends who were like, "Hey, want to go see it?" And I was like, "Sure." I haven't seen the last one, and they were like, "Neither have we." Horribly, <laughs> like, right, horribly <laughs> formulaic, and it did the exact same thing that they've all done. Yeah. I mean, they, they they had they had the guy on the ground. There were 30 people around him, and they were beating him and slashing him. And then they all just decided to stop. Spoilers. Yeah. And then he, and then he all, and then he gets up and he kills everybody <laughs> around him. You know, 20 a mob of 20 people all trying to you know. I'm like. Holy fuck! What is wrong with all you people? It's. I had a friend that was like, oh. "When do you draw the line from horror movie to action movie?" Because like Halloween Kills is basically John Wick of horror movies. Right. <laughs> it is. Yes. I have a question though. On uh, speaking of drawing or where the line is, where what is the classification of an indie film? 
Um, independent just means like independent production in, in the sense of, uh, you know. Well, how, would, how do you know? I mean, that's so, so usually when I'm watching a movie, there's, there's fucking six, there's like a minute and a half of fucking logos and this and that. And then they right. repeat them somewhere in the, you know, if they do one of those like cold openings and then all of a sudden, then, then the, all the shit comes yeah. in. How do you know when it's independent? Because there still seems to be a ton of, you know, production company. Everything's on there. How do you, and that's for other people and me. How do you how do you classify independent? I mean, usually it comes down to budget okay. is kind of where, you know, where your independent movies come into play. And then even like Fox has, you know, they own a production company called Fox Searchlight. That's their independent, right. okay. you know. All right. um, and then, um, you know, like A24 films, those are independent. Like A24 is an independent production company. But those are usually the companies. Blumhouse is even, you know, like they're is big. Blumhouse you know, considered an independent? I believe so. But I they're, they they're were, big yeah. indie. Like they're, you know, at the brink, you know, I mean, they're, they're big indie. They're still spending millions of dollars on movies. But like, mm-hmm. like right now, the budget, the budget that we're working in is you know uh considered ultra low budget as far as uh, like sag is concerned if you're working mm. with union okay so if you're working with union you know they break everything down into into budget ranges we are working within the ultra low budget which is anything between twenty thousand dollars and three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're the movie that we're currently funding. We're trying to get thirty-five thousand for, gotcha. which puts us into an ultra low budget range, which makes working with SAG more expensive because we're at the bottom of that <laughs> realm. <laughs> really? Because even that if you're at two hundred and ninety thousand, you're still paying them, your actors, the exact same amount, whether or not you're you're you know. Oh, you're, oh okay. so you're because over. you're you're within Damn. that budget range. Gotcha. Wow. Well, that, yeah, that's a, that's awfully big. Right yeah, see, that's there. Because yeah. really, I mean, there is there. Uh, end of the budget because I mean there's been there's big budget independent movies yeah I mean we, we're ultra low budget you know is 300,000 and less I mean except for I think under 20,000 is considered like it's basically no budget <laughs> but I forget, <laughs> forget what, I forget what they call it uh, yeah uh, but the uh, but you know you have ultra low budget and then you know above that is low budget you know and then you have like a medium budget high but like so I, but I forget I forget what the top of that that pay scale is I didn't know if there like, was a, a top where you can okay you can't be independent if you're budgets over this well i mean even you know sag in itself is union actors so i mean it's across the board like you know hollywood movies whatever like independent movies uh it's just most independent most people with at least within our range like we don't work with sag actors very often i am with this current movie because we're trying to take that next step and 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 just spend more money on a movie and see what we can do and and the shooting schedule for this is the longest movie longest shooting schedule we've had like back to back Mm. um so it's like we're just Every movie we try to do, we're just taking that next step, trying to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So this mm-hmm. time we feel comfortable enough that, hey, now it's time to start bringing in more expensive talent because we're, hey, better talent. People who, who are consider themselves, you know, this is their day job. This is sure. what they're here to do. Uh, so you're going to get people that are professional that, you know, expect a certain thing on set, though, too. But also we can expect them to show up knowing their lines because sometimes you pay people that show up and don't know their lines. <laughs> so we can, we can expect them to know their lines. We expect them to, uh, you know, put the work in and, and, you know, do it on their end because, because they are part of the union and this is their livelihood. Right. You know? Okay. Yeah. I was classified. I mean, I guess in my head, indie was always just more classified as something different. No, ind- indie's independent. You know, I, just, I, mean, I, I mean, you know, it's to me, well, I guess what I was explaining was usually like a foreign film or something, something, not the formulaic movie, you know, and that's yeah. what I always classified as, as indie. Like you can see some things on, like was it, uh, tight? Is it Titan? Is one the movie that just came out? Have you have you seen that one from the? Uh, um, f- holy crap! That is a weird movie. I had to stop fucking watching it. No, it's it's fucked up. But it it's on the uh, it was on the Cannes Film Festival or whatever. You know, ones that make it to like these some of these yeah fucked up concept girl gets uh, uh, she has sex with a car and. And has a has a metal baby um, at some huh. point, but yet, sounds fantastic. But no, I mean, and that's how but Mark it's, it's super was weird. <laughs> I mean, but it's it's got rave reviews, and the co- the concept is just out there. If you actually are watching it, it's it's really weird and just really. But there's lots of tits and ass in it too, and and it's just it's not. But those are what I always considered, at least in my head. I was, that's why I was curious. And they probably are though. And that's why I was curious. What you know, because I guess there's everybody's got that in, that their own version of what like indie is. Yeah, you know, independent I, is is. I like the non formulaic. Is you what know, it always crossed my head. Production company independent from Hollywood, basically, gotcha. for, like independent from, right. uh, you know, some of the big studios. Big and, studios, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Right. Well, cool. in, the, in the in the nineties, uh, it was weird because you know, being a, a person who grew up in the middle of cornfields, you and the internet not being what it is today. 
there was no uh, you didn't have access to, to discover independent films unless it was one that got big enough on you know circuits right sure that some Hollywood production company or distribution company said oh that's really good we can make some money off this mm-hmm. and then we put it out there like pie is one that comes to oh, mind that yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. and but i you know i didn't know about that movie existing until like m- maybe well over a year after it had come out right. because there was no no way to go find it right well, well a lot of them had to have a, a you know they, they were put out slow or they had to get that cult following and then all of a sudden they all of a sudden get re redistri- you know new distributions and and a new you, you get a renewed interest in it now with the internet, it's much easier, I think, to get your renewed interest in it, and people could watch it without having to hope somebody puts it back at a theater, or right. you've got to wait for it to come out on VHS or DVD, you know, or you know, beta, uh, yeah. beta you know, laserdisc. I've got the <laughs> definition here for you. Oh. An independent film is a feature film or short film that is produced outside the major film studio system, in addition to being produced and distributed by independent em- entertainment companies. Uh. But if but if one of the studios oh, so by that definition it, some of the some of the movies that I thought I was like oh I'm cool I'm into, into, and it was like I didn't learn about it until after well it's still independent after, yeah. like like it was created independently but then it kind of well that's what I'm got saying sucked up how, by how a, does like the Fox Searchlight thing because it's technically owned you know, right, you know, that's, right that's crossing a weird little well, bar- see, well, little well, Fox line Searchlight, there, gray area <laughs> I would say that Fox Searchlight is distribution Fox Searchlight ah. in itself is I don't believe that they are like producing movies at that okay. at that level they're buying up movies at and that helping, level uh, and helping and trying to help get some of that out yeah. that, that that might not have the means to get. Right. Distribution out it's, it's something better. that has okay. gotten that word of mouth that is that now they got their eyes on now they're trying now they're buying it up and that happens pretty regularly too when a movie hits the film circuit gets some notification or gets like notoriety people start hearing about it and then somebody wants to buy it up we haven't had a huge like independent filmmaker like big surge i feel like since yeah. uh you know robert rodriguez quentin tarantino mm-hmm. like that whole like there was like four or five of them like in the 90s like early yeah. 90s, it just kind of blew up yeah. right all, like all at the same time mm-hmm. we haven't had that really i feel like since then nope. but i feel like because the market is just this weird oversaturated market where everything is just so formula formulaic formulaic is formulaic formulaic and uh <laughs> and it's uh just being like recycled ideas over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. I feel like we're about, we're on this brink of, it's about to explode. Bubble's going to burst. Bubble's going to burst. And I feel like we're going to get some indie filmmakers you, that pop you know out what that. You know what that sounds like? Fuck the craft beer industry. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. shit. I, the, the straight yeah. parallels there. Yeah. Cause you oh, also, yeah. you also get the macros who mm-hmm. fought and fought yeah. and fought the craft beer industry for forever. And Still then eventually good. they just, to some no, degree. they don't. Not really. They buy it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, now they buy it. They buy it, buy it yeah. now, and then they market it as they, a craft yeah, they, right. side. Just kind of like, like Elijah. You know, yeah. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fox Searchlight yeah. buys them up and mm-hmm. then puts them back out. But they're still technically, you know, now it's a macro buying out this. but Or they make their own, and, and they buy into the process. But we also craft beer, formulaic, all mm-hmm. over the fucking place. And... Uh, you know, event, and the, the the bubble has burst in a lot of them, and the ones that can't make it have gone away. Yeah. And you you f- you start to get these people who are truly creative, truly a master at the craft, and truly expanding out the business. Hot, you know, the mm-hmm. hot, the new hop farmers, the, the new hop creations, oh, yeah. all the kinds of things they're doing there with hops and and everything, and and all the all the ingredients even in the back end. Before it was just taking what was available and trying to make it work. Now they're making new ingredients that you can then expand out even more so it, it, the parallels are, are kind of all there I'm, I'm gonna guess with music kind of the same thing yeah got it, formulaic for a long time oh, then you I, well, get, I mean it I st- still is today and I, and actually in, in Indianapolis uh, I, I think music specifically like the, the, the scene g- peaked in the early 2000s yeah. and it's it's still trying to find its place right okay. now there's just there's not a lot of venues for people to get started out in if, if you don't already have an audience that you carry around with you sure it, it's it's well, there's pa- a few yeah. spots where you can go down and, and just kind of get your foot in the door but do you frequent black circle at all that's where i was Indiana? going black circle's got some I don't, unique it, fucking it, shit it's going a far on. drive for me and black i don't circle's frequent great. it but yeah black circle's got lots of really good stuff my, yeah. my buddy they're plays metal in like night. three or four bands there mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. yeah. they're big metal they got you know they're big on metal i mean yeah. they're they do the uh, drag bingo mm-hmm. and the drag show. They they have they're very artistic as far as mm-hmm. uh, 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 fostering that kind of independent and way to get kind of get things moving that that a lot haven't in a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, wasn't it was it Slippery Noodle used to be kind of the place where everybody kind of oh went? back in the day, yeah, back in the day because my I, uncle I my uncle was a, a you know in bands all back in the. 
back in the early uh, 90s and stuff with like, Coda, Red Beans and Rice. They did uh, blues and I they did bluegrass about red and, beans stuff. and rice. That's my un- that was my uncle is the oh, bass really? player, the big wow. the redhead. Yeah. Yeah, that's my uncle. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he still teaches and he still fosters, tries to foster yeah. a lot of that independent find your own sound, you know, try to try to do what you can. But obviously still everybody wants to make some money off mm-hmm. of it. Right. You know, enough to st- enough to fund the next one. Right. You know, <laughs> and hopefully still be able to eat. You know, <laughs> I, but I've, I've noticed there's um, a lot of smaller recording studios opening up in the area, too, yeah. which is always a good yeah. thing to well, see. The equipment's accessible. now, Right. I mean, yeah. you, you can make a studio for, you know, yeah. you can find the shit on Amazon now. You know, you, you put up a bunch of enough sound baffling. You can make your own studios and and the look at look at us. I mean, I'm running, you know, laptop and 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 some good board and stuff. But you spend a little bit of money on some of that stuff. You can you can get some good shit. And yeah, I mean, so you, get, much you more get cheap stuff to just start yourself out and just see if you like it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Which yeah. before you had to have a huge investment. Right. Now, if you want to start podcasting, I mean, you can start podcasting for a couple hundred bucks and mm-hmm. get yourself enough equipment just to at least get yourself in the door to see if you like, like yeah. the format. And, and it's yep. good sound quality, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, can, you, yeah. you can spend $100 on a microphone, and it, it's it's not, you don't have to buy a $3,000 microphone. It seems it's not going to do any similar different. with filmmaking because you, 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 kind of the same progression that you were talking about earlier 100%. that you went through. You don't have Some to buy a twenty thousand dollars. Some making like short little YouTube or TikTok things, but then they kind of develop that passion for it, and it keeps growing. Well, even and, right now, you know, a, everybody has a camera in their pocket. I mean, right. like everybody has. I mean, if you've got, at least, got a recording studio in your pocket, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right yeah. now, if you've got, you know, a newer phone, you know, like one that's just in the last five years, like you that camera on there is better than anything I was shooting in high school yeah. Oh, yeah. and I was shooting yeah. movies then so like if you've got that and then something decent maybe not even really decent but just an external audio recorder too yeah. if you can do video and record your, your audio externally so you can get a little bit closer with it then you can film a movie I mean there's been a couple of a couple of big movies that have been filmed like in recent years there was a big horror movie that actually like got a theatrical release that was all shot on Whatever the Sam's, whatever new Samsung phone came out that year, the Galaxy, they, they, yeah, the Galaxy, whatever, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's possible now to to do that, and that's a good entry point for filmmakers if they just want to see if they like it. But mm-hmm. people will put that as a roadblock and say, "Oh, I can't do it until I get whatever camera." But yeah. I, when I went to Las Vegas and shot that movie with Troma, I shot it on a Canon T six I, which is a three hundred dollar camera that I, you know, it was a, you know, it's a DSLR. It's a, ph- yeah. you know, photography camera that I bought for myself as a gift for graduating college. I was like, I got my associate's degree and I was like, oh, I'm going to just get, I'm going to get this camera just for fun. And that's the camera I ended up shooting a trauma movie on. Because, <laughs> and I, like I showed up, I, I bought myself a really professional case to carry that camera. And I showed up and like clicked it open, plot this tiny yeah. little camera. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Fake it to make it. <laughs> It works. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> I think we should uh, take a quick five and then uh, come back and uh, have a beer. Open up one. No, of these we're, about, we're about we're about done with the show uh, on this. Actually, one. talk about the movie he's going to. Oh, that yeah, we're yeah because yeah. we're about done with the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's drink the beer. Let's drink a beer. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Beer back. If you're a craft beer guy who can't get it nearby, do yourself a favor and log into Taver. This is Jessica from Digital Wolf, and you're listening to Blind Pigs Confessions. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Blind Pig Confessions. I am Kevin Furtick Realty with Remax Legends Group. And you can reach me at 317-869-7646 or at Gmail at Kevin Furtick Realtor at gmail.com. If you have Facebook, hey, Kevin Furtick Realty. If you have Twitter, the Kevin Furtick. If you have Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, one more thing, the Kevin Furtick. Ladies and gentlemen, I would love to be your realtor and I would love to be able to raise your hand and say the champ is Home. All right, so we finally grabbed a beer. I know it's supposed to be a beer show, and we've been talking movies. And I've been drinking this whole shit. time. Yeah, well, yes, we, we have yeah, been drinking. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> drinking the Hershey Porter, which uh, the Yingling's Hershey Porter, which if nobody knows, you should know by now because it's like two years now. This shit is awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not always touting, you know, big macro breweries, but this is some. It's a great fucking porter. It's Yingling. Yeah, but yeah, I, well, it's, it's really Yingling is. Hershey, but yeah. the Hershey, I don't yeah. know, adds something yeah. to it. So yeah, so it's been spectacular. So I've been, I've been nursing that one. And the uh, PBR, of course, is flowing there in my house always. Yep, always. Yeah. There's always PBR, some brew dog. A little bourbon in At it. the house, bourbon. Yeah, you have a, a lot of cans around you. You're drinking a well, lot more than the rest yeah, of us. Yeah, well, two more, you know, this one's full, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, sure. Yeah, but there's Edgewood. three empties cans. Uh, there's three empties yeah. around you. Well, yeah. Alcohol. And uh, this is a, uh, 
What are we drinking? Frozen carbonite. This is uh, Weldworks. I think these guys, I'm, that's what I was trying to look for. I think they're out of Ohio, but I'm not positive. What, the frozen Weldworks? carbonite? No, yeah, Weldworks. I think it's out of Ohio. Maybe sure Chicago. You sure we didn't do that one already? No. <laughs> <laughs> doing it now, though. Do yeah, it probably. It's good shit. But uh, it's that, yeah, we probably did because it's that, uh, I think we were talking about the hops before. Maybe we talked about the hops. I don't know if we drank it on the show, though. Okay, well, it's the Weldworks. Yeah, yeah. does this have the one with the uh, the powder stuff in it? It's the, the car- yeah, yep, yep. And the, the, yeah, uh, they like uh, carbon freeze yeah. or whatever, some uh, the yep. hops and maybe make a powder out of it or yeah. some flash freeze. Yep, frozen and carbonite, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're out of Chicago, maybe. I don't know. Working on it. Somewhere like that. But yeah, got it in front of you. Give it a shot. Um, out of Greeley, Colorado. Really? Mm-hmm. No, not even close. Yeah. Very not Ohio. Weldworks, mm-hmm. Bri- yeah. Nothing's overpowering. It doesn't come like a wow. This is a great beer, but it's just a. Is this a double or a, what is this a? Uh, just this regular is a, IPA or, know, or it's a, a Nipa? Yeah, it's a double. Okay, double okay. IPA. That's what we figured. Eldorado it, it, had a, it had a little more body to yeah. it and a yeah. little less, little less, a uh, little less uh, hop bitter to it yep. than a regular IPA does. So, I like the double. It tends to smooth out. It tends to smooth out that hopness. It's still got that. You know, you, you definitely got the bitter hop ending to it and a yeah. dry, which is all right. You're, Corey, you're more of an IPA fan. Yeah, yeah. The, the doubles definitely do kind of take that. Uh, the take thing the that most bite. people, th- yeah, that most people will try an IPA and instantly not like it because yeah. of that. And yeah, the, well, the, yeah, because you're yeah you're, you're mellowing it out. Down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the double and triple, I think the smoother it gets. I mean, but I mean, you know, a little more sugars in there, but. Um, Plus, regular. you're 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 mellowing you're mellowing it out um, right. with the uh, with the uh, arrow. You know, you're not just the aromatic, right. but you're adding more. You know, because you're putting a little it more in the body boil and and yep. and, uh, and your post uh, and in your post. So, yeah, it, for, it, it's good. for me, it's I think it leans on like the like more of the floral side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I'm, I'm more like the citrus side of things mm-hmm. personally. But the hazies, uh, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. That's how I am. Yep. <clears throat> hazies and the nipas are great for the juiciness part of it. All yeah. that. And, oh yeah. Yeah, open it up. They can drink at breakfast. That's you know nothing wrong with that. So, but yeah, the floor. I mean, they're you, good. You have, like have, you have to have a specific beer to drink at breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice hazy, nice citrus oh, hazy. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Going with beer. And that's for the shower. No, oh. <laughs> shower beer. Yeah. That's your PBR. Yeah, PBR yeah. shower beer. PBR is that's the good. best shower beer. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you get water and it tastes the same. <laughs> 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 Can't hurt the shit. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah, that's All good. Right. No, it's beautiful. I like it. So yeah, Weldworks. Uh, yeah, for well, those of you Weldworks out in Colorado, um, usually uh, you know check out your uh, Tavor app and see if they got anything uh, released out from there. Everything's been. I have. I. I. I have not. I'll admit it. Sorry, I have not. Not touched my t- Tavor app for the last like month. Oh really? Well, I had. I mean, I had saved some money. I know. Well, I'm, I, there's just starting now. And I got too many They're beers in the fridge. Some good stuff out there because it's getting into November and yeah, December. Yeah, so I need to start, now. But you got to. Yeah, they're gonna. As soon as you do it, though, they're gonna. You throw a couple hundred bucks down, and they put something else on yeah. a day later. I'm like, fuck. I gotta get some. I gotta get some shit out of my fridge. Right. Okay, we gotta drink up some more, and I gotta have a. I need to have a beer party where everybody just comes and drinks all the leftovers that I have in my fridge. And the it's it's gone as soon as it comes out. It's gone. Like I know. anchors just put one out, and it was I, I I logged in like a minute later, and it was already sold out. I'm like oh, son damn. of a bitch. Yeah, that sucks. But is this, is this the bastard cat over here? Uh, which one is it? I don't, I don't know. know. The, the tan one doesn't look like one of yours. Is this the one? Yeah, that's this. Yeah, this the new the new little shit yeah, kitty. He just got his. Yeah, he's got snipped. He's little, to calm so he calm him down. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, it hasn't yet. I no. Mean, yeah, he came back from the dam. He was already flying around. Shit kitty. Yeah. That's cool the one kid. that now beats up on. Yeah. On the other, on the, uh, on the this one, one beats up on the big yeah. one. So the big one beats up on the middle child now. Yeah. And so everybody's unhappy. So now the middle <laughs> Great. Child's got That's what cats all sorts do. Of anxiety <laughs> disorders. How fucking evil? I got him on Prozac. I'll take him. Well, home. hold on. Wait, wait. Which cat you got on Prozac? Uh, Kiki, the, 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 the really? You, you yeah, have put a cat on fucking Prozac? Out. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. He. I'm telling you, he's like freaked out from all this shit. God damn. <laughs> People are putting their fucking animals on goddamn fucking. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> it just it seems so fucking ridiculous. It's well too. Just rub I mean, it in its ear. It's huh? You just throw it, rub it in the ear, and it you rub like, Prozac in yeah. your cat's ear. Yeah, does that work for humans? I, I mean, I did when Aubrey was sleeping. I do something in there, but <laughs> 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 she's pretty mellow today. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know you could uh, apply it through the ear. I didn't either. Uh, I should do that with a lot of other hum- with humans, I guess. You could just kind of just injection in your ear now. Okay, that works. <laughs> works. Uh, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> at, at that point, get rid of the cat. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm 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 not very I'm not very loving towards the kitties. <laughs> Mainly because I'm I'm allergic. I am horribly allergic to oh, them. I am. So as, I am also. I, I, yeah. I've never Are you really. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't oh, really yeah. connect with them. You know, over the years, so I, I just yeah, they're, they're just evil. I'm with you. But they do fuck up all my furniture because I have two in my house. Even though I'm allergic to them, but they're my roommates, and I can't have nice things because there's cats around. It's destroyed my furniture already. That's why I didn't Squirt buy the gun. expensive. Nope. Why? But I couldn't even buy the expensive, the good leather furniture I wanted because I'm like, nope. These little fuckers are good. Nope. <laughs> nope. Can't do it. All right. Well, back to beer. Back to beer and movies. Back to and beer and movies. Cats. So, uh, Toy, tell us about the movie coming out. Cause I, we, we didn't really hit that yet. So, what exactly is it? What's how did the concept come around? Dude, come on. He, oh, he's getting his marketing hat on and yep. his, uh, his oh, promotional yeah. hat. <laughs> yes. It's, it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wear the headphones with it. It doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> the movie's a it's a sci-fi, um, what do you call it, like a sci-fi drama, I guess. Okay. It's a what I'm calling a post- Victorian dystopia is the world setting. So it's like if all of a sudden Victorian clothing style was just like all of a sudden, like just back, you okay. know, all of a sudden. But um, it's very, it's a bleak world. It's very, I mean, children of men in a, sure. in a sense, because uh, it's no child has been born in the last decade. And that's more the sci-fi. When I, when I say sci-fi, it's kind of loose. It's not like spaceships and stuff like that. It's, it's just a kind of post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> Um, it's uh, you know ruled by you know a you know kind of a dictator government that is uh, controlling the population, mm-hmm. uh, and so there's a kind of a rebellion happening in the background of the film. So this was set in 2016. You're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> but the uh, the 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 premise really is about, I mean, the, the movie is about four criminals that uh, have, uh, it's a heist film, but it takes place after the heist. It's four criminals that have, have robbed this facility. They don't really know what they've robbed, and they don't really know who has the item that they've stolen. So it's kind of a mystery movie of them trying to figure out what it is that they've even done, because uh, they're all compartmentalized. They all had one job to do within the heist, and now they've got to figure out what they've done. And whatever they've done is going to change the political background of the of the world that they're in uh-huh. uh, drastically. And they're all criminals that were in prison that the government has hired to do this job, and they're all getting something out of it. So they don't really care what happens to the, in the political <laughs> side of things. They're, it's more kind of Suicide Squad in that sense sure. of, of they're just doing it for their own personal gain. Right. Uh, but So none of them can trust each other. They're all dirtbags. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're just, as an audience member trying to figure out kind of the point of it all like sure. what is going on like what have they stolen what and really who has it is kind of the the big thing of the movie is you're playing that shell game of trying to figure out where'd the item go okay and uh and you know these characters they're, they, they're dirtbags they're likable uh <laughs> you know you get attached to people people die um we are doing this sci-fi movie because i'm a sci-fi fan i'm a crime movie fan crime's like my that's my thing i love crime movies so I've been wanting to do a crime movie for a long time, and sci-fi, I just kind of, sci-fi, sci-fi felt like the right place for me to be able to talk politics sure. mm-hmm. and not have to be in your face about it right. yeah. Yeah. or, like, shove yeah. stuff down your throat or, sure. or anything like that. Like, it's, it's the background of the film. It's just kind of the setting, and it's not unlike the current political divide <clears throat> that we are experiencing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the world that I'm kind of building is this, this heavy political divide. But... Um, I've got a lot of really talented people involved in this. The writer is Michael Taylor, who's also playing the main character, Gentry. And um, what he's been able to, to bring to the story of this, like him and I have bounced ideas back and forth for, you know, I mean, most of this year. And the story that we've come up with now is it's better than what I originally had in my head. And now that we've got the talent and we're starting to see the picture be painted more, we can see, we're starting to see these people take place. Uh, we just announced Hannah Fearman, and Hannah is known for a movie called VHS. She was in, uh, she's in uh, on Shutter. She's in uh, Creep Show, like the new Creep Show TV series. She was in uh, The Vampire Diaries. So she's coming on as one of our main characters. She's absolutely fantastic. We also have. Um, a comedian who's he's known for uh, on Netflix. There's that show that's uh, Prank Encounters uh, yeah. with uh, like the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah, um, yeah. his name oh, is. Okay. 
uh, David Stores, and he's he's in that. He's in um, he's in Scare PewDiePie, which is like a YouTube red show with like PewDiePie. Uh, he's in uh, uh, he's in um, uh, Thunder Force with Melissa McCarthy. Like he he's. In, in a lot of big stuff, sure, right. and he's we've got him coming on as kind of like a somewhat of a comedic relief character, uh, mm -hmm. who's also a dirtbag uh, character as well. But he's he's got a lot. That him and it's like him and his his wife are like the characters in the movie that are just kind of uh, a couple of characters that aren't part of the main crew, but they're off to the side, and they're just their banter back and forth is really funny, and they're kind of I don't know like commenting along what's happening throughout the movie to a degree that I think is, I think is, you know, it's really funny. And, and David read the script and he thought it was hilarious. And like, he thought the character was hilarious. Not that the script was hilarious, but he thought mm -hmm. the character was hilarious and thought that he could bring something to that, that character. And, and uh, uh, so having him on board is going to be just, uh, it's awesome. And I, I wish I could talk about, we do have another uh, like kind of a um, horror actress, like eighties horror actress that, uh, we're excited to announce, hopefully, but right now I can't talk about it because it's not official. But uh, we have uh, some other players in this movie that once we get, once you know, and who knows? By the time this podcast airs, we may, I may have been able to talk about it. I'm not really sure because uh, I'm hoping to get that nail, you know, get that locked in here uh, over the next few days. But um, we've got a lot of big horror people, and we've got some comedy people, and a lot of uh, up and coming actors from our area too. Um, uh, Alex Daphnis is from Michigan and he is a fantastic actor. He's done a lot of short film stuff. Um, I, I co-founded two independent film festivals, Midwest Horror Fest and Midwest Action Fest, which we've ran for the last five years. In Midwest Action Fest in our first year, we had a movie called Candyland. And that movie was a very Tarantino-esque film about like these kind of, this candy company like mobster guys that would come into small town like <laughs> stores and be like I see that you have our candy bar on the bottom shelf we need that candy bar up on the top shelf <laughs> and like would just like lay the you know what I mean just like yeah, come yeah, in yeah. as the muscle and he played like this this main guy and we gave him best actor that year I didn't know that he was from Michigan at the time I didn't know he was so close and then he contacted us and we've just been friends over the years and we've worked with him on a short uh, a few years ago and then now so now I'm like you know putting him in as one of my main characters for this and uh, since since the get go since the inception of the film I've always had him in mind for this character and uh nice. I sent him the sides, had him audition for it, and I'm just very excited to bring him into this movie as well. Uh, as I said, Michael is is the writer, he's the producer, and he's also uh, going to be playing Gentry. He was like one of the one of the main characters. How do you how do you reach out and get these two to actors? You know, for your casting. I mean, especially with independent. I mean. How was that process done? I'm for for the for like uh, for Hannah and and oh. and David, the it's just knowing people. Okay. Um, so okay, it it's it's just, it really is for, just for networking. It's networking. Okay. We I've been doing this for six years and meeting people. You know, uh, you know, working with different companies and uh, Hannah came about because my effects guy that I use all the time is Derek Worley. Uh, uh, he runs IFX. And he is fantastic. He's he's he did uh, some of the zombies in Zombieland too. Um, he's you know he's done some of the big stuff. He's done a lot of like smaller films, but he uh, went and did effects on Hannah. Directed a movie here recently called Dark Circles, and he worked on that. So he knew her. You know, I was right. looking for an actress to play uh, one of my main characters, and he suggested her. So uh, you know, he he reached out to her. You know, broke awesome. the ice for me. I reached out. She's into it. She's such an awesome person. She was, as soon as I said, uh, you know, Victorian, she was like, oh, I love Victorian. And then the cool thing about the, the movie like, is. This isn't Little Women. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing about the movie is that it's Victorian, but it's not, it's not straight Victorian. It's, it's like if Victorian was mashed up with today's kind of hip hop culture. Sure. So it's like, it's like vests and bowler hats, but like face tattoos and jogger pants. So there's, you know, an element of, like, trying to mash up today's kind of, like, culture, like, hip-hop culture. So, like, so like, clock, like, the guys from Clockwork Orange. Yeah. 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 I mean, kind of. Kind of, yeah. But Cod pieces and bowler hats. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's got, like, modern cell phones and things like yeah. that. But I think it's going to take a hot minute in the movie to realize that it's a kind of, like, a future movie. Sure. Because I think at first you're, it, it, it will appear or at least feel like it's Victorian, and then you're like, what's going on? Well, typically, I mean, the most dystopian future ones, or even future ones, it's, everything's a mashup of 
everything and then something Asian. That's yeah. typically the, you know, when you, if you look at most future. No, no. I mean, so I like the, the, the fact that it's different because most every future sci-fi movie yeah. is everything is a mashup of Asian and something of this, you know. There is like uh, a Blade Runner feel to the thing, which is Blade which Runner's is very, Blade Runner's very Asian in the, right. in the sense of, uh, uh, you know, it definitely pulls from a lot of, well, I mean, you know, I don't know. Blade Runner, in the X, I guess from its conception, like the first Blade Runner inspired a lot of Japanese like yeah. anime yeah. Yeah. that sure, then yeah. turned around yeah. in an American yeah. culture, like, you know, capitalized on all of that. Mm-hmm. So it's like art and take life and the art, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but like in the movie, there's a lot of neon aspect to the movie too. That sure. is like that Blade Runner kind of feel. Right. Everything's wet. Like every time you go outside, it's wet and it's neon, <laughs> but, uh, right. uh, but inside, you know, most of the movie takes place within a diner. Um, and it's, you know, just characters cool. kind of trying to figure out a puzzle. All right. Awesome. No, that's, that's like I said. I like I like the alternate instead of following the formulaic yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, so where do, up with something slightly where do we find the uh, Indiegogo? Like, where can we go and contribute if we want to do such a thing? Um, you'll be able to find it through our Facebook page, which is Rad Entertainment. Um, you can there'll be links to it on our website, which is radentertain.com. dot com. And then I should have set up by then. You should just be able to go to theundesirables.com. dot <clears throat> com. Uh, Awesome. That will that will be awesome. campaign kickoff is February nineteenth. February ninth. Okay. February nineteenth at seven p.m. is okay. our kickoff party, which is a live stream event that we're having on Facebook and on YouTube through uh, Rad Entertainment on YouTube and on our Facebook page, and then on my personal page. And I'm going to stream it anywhere and everywhere that I possibly can. But um, uh, that is going to be a really fun party where we get to talk about a lot of the perks that we're selling on our Indiegogo because we're doing. Every every independent movie is trying to do something different, you know. I mean, you know, we've seen it all, and sure. we're trying to branch out and do some different things. Like we're selling, obviously, the blue, you know, pre-ordering the Blu-ray. We're selling posters. Um, we in the movie because they have this heavy political divide. We have propaganda posters, kind of from each side of the divide. Uh, you know, things that say like "Stop the insanity, bring back humanity," stuff like that. But there's like some really great artists attached to those, uh, and then um, you yeah, know, but that's stuff that people expect. Mm-hmm. We also are selling. Um, I'm a huge fan of hot sauce. <laughs> uh, I oh, like yeah. hot sauces that are ridiculously hot, but I like I like hot sauces across the board. So right. we have we have a hot sauce for each of the factions. So we got those two factions. We got two hot sauces. We've got a hot sauce that is like ridiculously hot, like ghost pepper hot sauce, and then we have one that's a jalapeno based hot sauce uh, for the other factions. Just so you know, whatever you want, you can get you, know, you can get the set. You can get one or the other. Uh, I just thought that was a unique thing. I just I try to capitalize. People like authenticity, and I'm a huge yeah, hot sauce yeah. fan, so I feel like there's oh, other yeah. people that are hot sauce fans. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of like one of those artistic like craft beer mm-hmm. worlds that exist right now is hot sauce. Can you get, well, some, yeah. uh, get some uh, Dragon's Breath. There yeah. you go. Have you ever had that one? Um, I have not. Nobody has. Well, actually, they, they put the tiny. Have, have you seen the Dragon's Breath pepper? Holy fuck balls. I haven't seen the pepper. No, I just no. heard talking uh, about Hunt, it. Hunt Club, I think, added some to one of their hot They, yeah. they made a hot yeah. sauce. It is it is literally uh, no one has eaten a pepper because you'll die to the point of anaphylactic shock. Um, they are it's at two point four eight million on the Scoville. Most foods which that you is can't twice, eat without dying are just called poisonous. Which is what, yeah, yeah, which is, <laughs> which is this guy genetically engineered this one. That's like twice as much as the, the Carolina Reaper. Right. Um, and it's basically just being uh, marketed for military purposes. <laughs> 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 but like when, there's a there's a distillery around here. Because I looked it up when he saw it, and it, it he's, he, they apparently put some dragon's breath in there, and I'm not sure anybody would. I mean, I think someone tried to put like one drop on it, and I'm like, come on, man, you don't need to put shit out that kills people. But if you like hot sauce, look for a dragon's breath. I might have to try a drop of it. I yeah, don't know. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. A, a, a well diluted drop. <laughs> Last year when we were funding Idol Girl, we did a hot sauce challenge, and we did kind of through the hot ones list of of hot sauces. Yeah. And then we ended it with, um, if we raised so much money, I did the, the one chip challenge at the end of it. Ooh. So I went through and did all these hot sauces and then ate the one chip at the end of it. I think I was. I think honestly, it was in my favor because by the time I got to the chip, it didn't oh, really matter. Bad, the, chip, yeah. the chip wasn't that bad. Everybody oh, no. else who did the chip, because because I was the first one on the list of like the tier of. Well, if we make it this much money, I'll eat the chip. If we make it this much money, then the director will eat the chip. And if we make it this money, then we'll, the main actors will eat the chip because we we one of the actors to have to do it last because you know like, show, <laughs> just to show them we'll do it we'll do it first. But even after uh, it was my wife was the director of that, and after she ate the chip, she like messaged her. She's like, "You guys don't have to eat it if you don't want to." Yeah. It was awful. <laughs> 
Well, after you've had enough of them, you're already you're you're immunized yeah. against. I mean, you're you're already in that euphoric state. Oh, of... for sure. But when I ate that chip, it was this weird euphoric state. Like that chip put me into a like I was stoned. I was just like <laughs> I, it put me into a world where I was just like it was very. I don't know. I've never felt that way. It, oh, was, yeah. it was a high that was. There, there are pepper clubs that do that. I mean, and they 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 will eat enough and little by but they do it little by little. They'll have it in their in cookies and they'll have these yeah. parties. Oh yeah, and it's you're trying to get to that. Yeah, it's it's basically a high there's at that, that there's point. There's like a, I got a, there. a, a, I think South American like root that they make at yeah. ayahuasca or something yeah. like that. Yep, that you like literally purge everything out of your body and then have some type of euphoric spiritual yep. experience. Yeah. I think I, I mean, would I rather that too, do but. it like I don't want I don't want all the uh, my mouth on fire before I try to see God. Like, <laughs> I, could, I could do without that part of it. It's yeah. not God. But the, <laughs> the hot sauces, Satan. the hot sauces we're getting are made from uh, a guy named his, uh, Cameron Scott, who is he's a director, a writer, an actor uh, that I've worked with a lot, and he's also a chef. So. Mm. As soon as we, you know, we're, we're, you know, he made he makes this barbecue sauce mm. that is just incredible and it's like kind of spicy, and he makes it every like every movie set he shows up with a new barbecue sauce and it's always nice. delicious. And I was like, hey, you want to make a hot sauce for me? So he immediately like, jumped yeah. on that idea. I was I was wondering how you kind of got to the oh we're gonna market a hot sauce to try to help with the movie. Effort. I I, like, I just, just happen to know a guy. I just happen to know a guy. It's okay. networking. It's yep, yep. you know. And then the it's gonna be a weird product placement in this Victorian <laughs> future movie with fucking hot sauce. Hey, they're sitting in a diner. There it's not. Go. It's yeah. not that weird. Yeah, it's right. not that weird. Yeah, I didn't think about the, the setting. There. The yeah, setting is go. a diner. I was like, I can incorporate this hot sauce in the movie just fine. There we go. And then also. Uh, part of the element, or one element of the movie that is a mystery is the heist itself. We do flashback to it, to, to moments of it, sure. but ultimately, you don't see the heist. So what I wanted to do, because oh, part of our pre-production is... You'd be one of those dicks, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> part, part of our pre-production is that I'm creating an animatic for this movie, uh, which is using the Unreal Engine, and that is uh, specifically the Unreal Engine 5, which just launched... And I've been toying around with it since its launch, and I was toying around with Unreal Engine 4 before that. But um, I'm creating an animatic, so that way uh, it's basically the entire movie in video game form in the sense of like a, like a video game cutscene. Uh, so it's going to be you know done in that style, so that way I can see every single shot of the movie beforehand, get a sense of the pace. We're going to do a, uh, you know, a zoom call table read. So that way I have, and I can record that. So I can get all of the, the audio, everybody's That's actors. Awesome. So I can put all their voices over the top of everything. Uh, just so we can kind of get a good idea before we go and film this movie, what it's going to be. And then we have the ability to change some things before we get Damn. in and start filming stuff. Uh, but because I'll have all that pre-built within the unreal engine, <laughs> specifically the heist, I'm going to take that location and make a video game that is one level uh, four missions that is just each of the, the heist members, each of the people that are involved in it. So that way you can go through and play through and then maybe we'll reveal exactly what they stole because that's kind of one of the mysteries of the movie is it's a little bit left late, up. Ten years later. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit left up to interpretation as, as like, what do you that's think cool they stole? Shit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so that's like a unique video game or a unique yeah. perk that I think that people will enjoy everybody i've pitched it to a few of my filmmaker friends and they were just like holy can you do that i was like i think i, I, I can do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, brilliant give it a try yeah yeah so i think we have some some unique perks we have some stuff that people expect but we also have some things that i think that are gonna uh surprise people and just our amount of pre-production that like just the building the animatic is something that um, people don't do uh, in our kind of price budget. Like, you know, it's right. usually you got to pay somebody to do that. People don't know how to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's just something I've been toying around with for the past probably like five, six months, just kind of learning the software to, to jump into this. But now I got, you know, I'm going to work. March will be here before you know it. So yeah. I'm working on that right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it, it all, yeah, it all, it all works out. You think you got it and then everything just starts piling on at once. You got to, Oh yeah. Gotta be careful, but hopefully it all works out. I hope that's great. That sounds awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we can do some follow up shows as you're going through the you definitely. Know, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, 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 just kind of follow you through the, the whole process and uh, and the project, and maybe get some actors on and what you know through the process. We For sure, we'll, we'll go down. You know, we'll go. We'll, we'll bring the there we'll bring the beer. We'll bring yeah yeah. But uh, no, it'd be fun. I mean, it'd be cool as hell. And then uh, we'll bring the I'll bring the dragon's breath hot sauce. Yeah yeah. <laughs> when you when you get we're starting to roll out a movie, you know, you're looking for premieres and you know, how do you is that more networking too? Where are you showing stuff at? And 
it, it is more networking. I mean, we were we are guaranteed to premiere it in Logan Sport because mm-hmm. my my uh, big thing with this movie is I want it to be a Logan Sport project. Right. I love Logan Sport. I love that city. It's it's a got a really unique art scene uh, as far as the music scene there, and then just also just like artists in the sense of illustrators and painters really? and Logan Sport. so many people. Really? really, so many people. It's 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 an incredible art scene there. That's why we have things like. Uh, like the Black Dog Coffee Shop is, oh. it's uh, has a storefront called Legacy, and that is just entirely full of leather crafters, people that make soap, like just all these like different craft, you oh. know, things for sale, but also like paintings and clothing and just so much stuff from so many local artists. It's a whole, we have a whole lot different from my years in Logansport, <laughs> and and it really is. And it, it, well, my, it, my my family has tons of. I mean, we have a ton of history. My grandma and aunts and uncles. At my my last unc my. Last unc- my last family members have all passed away there in the last like two years, and so I don't go up there. <laughs> I don't go up there anymore. But every time we kind of went up there uh, over the years, it's just it seems to have gotten just more run down and things are depressing. Just, yeah, it, 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 it did for a while, and yeah. now the downtown in Logosport has just yeah. really started to boom and become. Well, something. I know there's a couple breweries out there now. I think uh, I heard you know that they've got some stuff opening up there, and mm-hmm. it's neat. Yeah, we, yeah, I would always say it was it was the industrial town. Everybody yeah. worked at. You know, right. one of the plants or something there, you know, yeah. and, and it just seemed to run my family kind of down. Oh, you for know? sure. And so everything uh, I had a picture in my head always of Logan Sport as it as. And that's what most people think of it as. Yeah. But I, I moved to Logan Sport uh, two and a half years ago now. And I I worked at the newspaper for the first two sure. years that I lived there. I absolutely love this city. I really well, that's do. Great. I'm glad um, it's revitalizing a little it, bit. It then. really okay. is um, with, a, you know, bonus pints is kind of like a been come like. That place is just blown up. It's a barcade mm-hmm. that just, yeah. you know, it's just strictly craft beer. Yep. Uh, people come in and, you know, like some of the, you know, the townsfolk come in and they want, you know, Budweiser sure. or whatever. And right. it's like, that's not what this place is. And uh, but they've cultivated over, you know, like Matt Swisher and, and Katia, you know, over the last 30 years of being in bands in the music scene, they've kind of cultivated this kind of fan basis that supports them. And they open up this restaurant and. There's people in there every single day. I mean, it's great. I mean, we do. I host uh, my my wife and I host trivia there now on Wednesday nights, <laughs> and and we packed that house last Wednesday nice. just with with trivia. That's awesome. Well, that's great. That's cool oh, to hear. Um, I, I love to hear that. Then you know, because like I said, my image and last weather went to the last funeral there. I haven't been back. Yeah. In like two years. I drive past it when I was driving up to see Brendan up in Winnemac and all that, <laughs> but I drive around it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, we, for, for this particular movie, you know, it's like we want to shoot every single scene in it in Logan Sport. We've done a lot of movies in Logan Sport, and we've done, but usually it's split. It's like we shoot half of it there, and we shot sure. like in par- like parallels. We shot half of it in Logan Sport and the other half in uh, Tennessee. And then... For, but for this movie, I want it to be completely shot in Logan Sport. We have the, the, the heist scene. We have access to a bank vault that is like a legit, just like 5,000-pound yeah. door bank vault. It's incredible. Uh, I, I get you'll be able to get the dystopian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not getting where the Victorian part. You're going to get the Victorian part well, in Victor- there. But hey. Well, Logan Sport <laughs> itself is, is built in late 1800s. So right. it actually has a ton of Victorian yeah, influence. Yeah, 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 it no. really does. <laughs> so like that's really why I decided to go that route was because I was like, well, I can lean on the stuff that's already here yeah, yeah. and make it feel like well, production yeah, there, value. There's, there's definitely some post-apocalyptic looking <laughs> <laughs> uh, areas out there <laughs> with some of the old. Where you know old warehouses and factories. Oh, for and sure. Some of stuff. <laughs> I love I love the industrial side of town, and we yeah. just got like this big mural painted. Awesome. Uh, That's great. Uh, on, right off the railroad tracks, like just like on one of the old buildings there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is just like a guy Sweet. hopping on a train. That's just I mean it's like thirty feet. Like it's a huge oh, wow. mural. It's wow. awesome. All right. <laughs> well, it's it's good of them to to come up and even the city itself. You know, finding trying to find a new life, even with art if it's artists or whatever, but yeah. finding a new life. Outside of just you know all the, mm-hmm. all factory. the factory stuff, right? That, that, I, was, that it was really all it was. It was a factory town. I had heard that the Indiana Transportation Museum just moved up there as well. They were headquartered in Noblesville for Ooh. as long as I can remember, and then they had a big falling out with Noblesville. Wow! But they were moving up there because you guys, there's huh. like a big, I don't remember the name of it. Somebody at work was telling me about <laughs> it, but there's like a big train thing up there, like a festival. There, there used to be a big train festival, and it's, it, it doesn't happen anymore. But the city in itself is built 
uh, it was a train yeah, lots town. Of rail, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it was a, it was factory a tra- rail mm-hmm. hub, and it yeah. still is. I mean, yeah. it still is. There's yeah. still trains yeah. that go through it every day. Yep. Uh, but it's you know trains themselves are you know a lot less. But it, it's built as it was a train town. It had a it had a red light district uh, that ran for the lo- it was like the longest <laughs> red light district in Indiana. If I remember correctly, they were last. They were the last <laughs> one to close down. They closed down. I can't. It's Which hard for for Indiana is completely weird. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, uh, being, we couldn't have we couldn't have beer on Sunday no until shit. like right. ten, five, ten years, five years ago or so. But uh. just a couple or like when you you would ride a train into Logansport and you would tell the conductor whether or not you wanted to get off on the left side of the tracks or the right side of the tracks. And that depended on where, if you were going to the red light district. But it, I think it was in the 70s. I can't remember. It was either the 60s or 70s when it got shut down. So you had to uh, basically admit you're getting laid to get yeah, off the train. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> are you getting laid or are you not getting laid? Well, I think I'm going to go get laid. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was the first uh, like female mayor, which was like the 60s or 70s in, in Logan Sport, which is very progressive sure. for you know the 60s sure. or 70s, yeah. whatever. But she shut that shit down right away. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think there's a lot more art that, you know, which is great. We have places that, you know, like, uh, well, Jessica's, have, you know, the, with the Nook and uh, the small towns, you, you don't realize that there is a lot of artists who you'll never know of, you know, anybody because they're, they're doing it in their home quietly and, you know, painting or anything, writing that never see. Yeah. I mean, how many great writers we've never known because they've never, their stuff is in a notebook and then. But got destroyed, you know, and just never, you've never yeah. seen. It's kind of sad. So it's great to see places that can bring this stuff out. And, and we refer to all these artists in that area, like Rochester or mm-hmm. Logansport, Winnemac, uh, yeah. you know, Kokomo, like all these artists, we refer to them uh, as the network. Like that's what mm-hmm. we, we always call it. We call it the network uh, to t- so much to the degree that we, you know, we have like a, a, a catchphrase, which is long live the network. Sure. Which we say to each other, you know, like in passing, like, hey, how you doing? Whatever, you know, see you later. Along with the network. Like, like we, we say that. Like, it's like, a, it's like a weird little cult thing that we've created over yeah. the last 30 years. And uh, um, even so much now that Kevin Burkett, who uh, was the former editor of the newspaper there, he runs the state theater. He's the head of the board of the state theater. He has a magazine called The Network, which he releases once mm-hmm. a month that has like the new whatever art stuff is going on. That's uh, what I wanted to hear about. Nice. Well, yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, we because so we talked about that on show when we do stuff with Jessica. Is we were talking. It's 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 weird to see that happen. From it, it's refreshing, I guess. Would be, was I think what I put it that the um and I don't even want to say it religious, but the the stoicism of the tiny town of the 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 every, every burden to conform and all that has lifted on some of that as. You know, as the generations have finally mm-hmm. started to change, where, I mean, Rochester had a freaking drag show mm-hmm. at a dive bar that really was for bikers. Yeah, back yeah. in the day, and I'm like, and everybody was having a good time. The the, the acceptance of artistic ability mm-hmm. out coming out of the little towns again is great. They're not being tamped down by, hey, get to the factory and work your nine to five job. Do that. You know, they're they're actually surprisingly more accepting now than they used to be, and that's it's weird. It's interesting, and yeah. I find it awesome that that some of I, and i'm not finding the right word of that you know normally you would say the religious piety of people have just conform conform small right. town you don't mm. do anything different you're not the creative people are the weird ones and you need to keep them huddled in one right. small section that is still very much relevant it's there. there it's still there mm-hmm. but like, it's lessened right i mean it's, to the point it, where there there are blossoming out a little more i mean i don't know if it's lessened i just yeah. think that the most of the weird people have found a place to hang they, out yeah they're giving them yeah there's a yeah, place it, to go it, it, but there's, there's nobody running around with pitchforks like they used to or um, trying to shut them down you know what i mean I, as much as well, as much as they're used to well, be. Say, yeah, well I, to a degree because we've had some things happen at some of these places yeah. where uh, um you know like you know just like the you know inspectors show up out of nowhere and it true. feels like well maybe somebody called somebody on somebody to just to try and get something right. caught true. I'm, yeah. I'm you know sure what i mean is. and i'm yeah, sure there is but like I, man do we run a tight ship <laughs> for, <laughs> for specifically that reason <laughs> right I, I, I think when you get into the small towns it's almost more of a, a function of the the people who don't fit that, you know, w- what you small town, commonly yeah. f- think of when you think of like small rural towns, especially in sure. Indiana, they stopped giving a shit about all of those other people. And, yeah. and, y- you know, through the nineties and early two thousands, you got to see all that play out. And now 
the other sides just kind of said, well, they're just going to be here. We can't do anything about that. So we might as well just let them be here. Hey, we're also all 30 now. Like all the people with the <laughs> colored mohawks and all the stuff. Sure. Like, that was me yeah. Yeah. in the early 2000s. But now, <laughs> now we're all now we're all we're the ones making the decisions in the town. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And that's what I mean. The generations have, you know, it's, it's not and, and it sounds bad, but the that those, those generations that, that, that were putting that on everybody, those have kind of they've died. You know, I don't mean to be rude about it, but it's eventually, eventually, the old white guys got to go away. You know, the old th- that, you get that, a small that enough racist. town and you're still waiting because there's some, well, granted, some pretty young old white guys. Yeah, out there. yeah, no shit. But it's yeah, it's still, still refreshing to see that it can it can happen and it can still that there there is a I find it ref, uh, in, heartening to see that there can be change. It's yeah. not doesn't have to go back and stay the way it was and. And the creative, creative people and other people who are different, tattoos, you know, mohawks, uh, you know, independent filmmakers, drag queens, who cares? Just, but, yeah, you know, yeah. the, everybody, you know, let your freak flag fr- yeah. fly at this point. And it's not as it's still bad. I get it. It can still there's still oppression yeah, and all that. It's, it's but it's refreshing it was, to yeah. see that some of these small towns can mm-hmm. let that shit blossom and everybody gets, you know, it's, and it's still everybody's cool. You know, it, it, it's so cool that we're bringing in people too that are like, you know, especially at like these places like Bonus Pines and Black Dog and the State yeah. Theater. Like State Theater last night had the Flying Toasters play, and they sold out that show. It's over six hundred people there. That's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, for a venue yep. in in fucking Logan's yeah, Indiana. Logansport, yeah. Indiana, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, in a town that was dying for a long time, you know, just just factory job, but factory jobs go away and the factories move elsewhere, but nobody's got a place to go and. And it's it's good to see that kind of stuff, and and that's that's what gives me hope that things are better, you know, things can get better, and then you die, and, and then but then there's, <laughs> but the, but then it could all just turn into a Victorian dystopian future, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Where there's been no babies <laughs> for ten years or whatever. <laughs> so no, it's, it's sorry, I, I get off on that. I, I really like when we get to that because uh, it just I don't know. I get I get very uh, emotional about seeing people actually do what they want to do and enjoy it and not just be tamped I think down a lot of by that the day to day It's from because we do have all these diff- different platforms now where people can see that there's other people like that there it's not you're not you know you're not different there's people like yeah. you all over the you know right. place. well that to be is, fair there di- are some people who different. are fucking different <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but and that but that's yeah, but it's good i mean i think it, people are starting to not have to grow up feeling like they're different or wrong because they're weird they're, they're, they're not the same as the three people next to him and you know three houses next to him right you know they they think they're i don't know i just i think there's a better like it. platforms now for that and which is good and i think the, the more we the good can, side of the internet yeah yeah <laughs> which it yeah. can be yeah. there's un- unfortunately it's all yeah. u- a lot of it's used for the yeah. wrong purposes yeah. but well, there it yeah well now we just gotta turn off cable news and make people turn that shit <laughs> off and stop watching it and so right. in that program to to yeah, corporate to battle that down and and, yeah. and just talk to each know, other and turn off the propaganda yeah, go out to your local freaking <laughs> Go to your local fucking yeah. bar and and yeah. chat with the guy next to you. That yeah. you know, it's cool to hear that you have like this the network thing you were talking uh-huh. about because uh, as as somebody who was once involved significantly more heavily in the in the music industry in the in the late nineties and early two thousands and then just left it for a long time to make kids and <laughs> get, <laughs> get, get a corporate job and all that to sort conform of thing. yes yeah actually yeah. yeah born and bred in uh rural indiana you're going to conform one way For or another well, yeah, you do. <laughs> but um th- it seems like that's always the biggest vehicle for like any creative endeavor is just trying to build up that network and get access to the people that can help you through that process so it's cool to hear that at least up in the Logansport area and Howard County area and all, all that, like there's there's a group of you that all are kind of working to hey, build that. Come hang out sometime and you you'll be part of it too. I mean, every single person that comes through there, as far as like you know, every band that plays at the you know at the state theater, every band that plays at at the record farm, like they all end up you know becoming part of this because they just feel the energy there and they right. see it and then they stay in touch and then they come back and they play again. I mean, it's just it's, and, and how it's it works. oddly. We see this so much. We I started to see it a lot in the craft brewery scene in Indiana of how uh, how much togetherness and supporting each other was growing up in Michigan. That it was it was you know fuck them they suck, 
the beer sucks. Nothing the but sucks. cutthroat. No, yeah. A lot of it, a lot. And, I, and I, I really seen a lot, so much different. The scene, I thought it, at first just the beer scene, but it's not just the beer scene. I see it in the music scene. I see, you're seeing it in the art scene in Indiana, which is different. And then I think we were talking a little bit about it. I don't understand why still, why isn't the music scene bigger than it is? There's great yeah, musicians there, here. You, you know so many it's people. It's a crossroads. That, you have people yeah. from all over the place coming here. They should be seeing this. And then, you know, but you still can't get people to come out and see things live and you know, it's like all the, what all, do we got to do? The open it, mic, all the open so many great artists dead. here. And yeah. what, what, what do we have to do to? You know, yeah. I don't know. It's I mean, there's still a, a major scene of Logan Sport of uh, people even my age that will go, "Oh, there's nothing to do with Logan Sport." Like, yeah. uh, like, like, yeah. just complain about the city. And I'm like, "Do you ever go out? Do you ever yeah. go to any of the events that happen in town? Do you ever read the newspaper? Do you, do you ever expand your horizons and yeah. go to something like? Oh, you yeah. just stay at home and watch Netflix all the time. Do you and yearn? That's totally. I mean, that and that's fine too. But don't <laughs> I mean, sit that, there that's fine as long as you're watching your movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can't complain if you're not going to go out and try it. Right. I've got I've got mm-hmm. friends that will just sit there and complain and complain about Logan Sport that there's nothing to do and I'm like, "What do you mean there's nothing to do? I literally do something all the time. Yeah. Every week I go out and do stuff." Yeah. I'm convinced like, there are people that live in like major metropolitan areas that even have oh, that. Oh, yeah. It, oh, that's what yeah. I'm saying. If, if these people lived if in New York City, go, yeah. they'd be the exact yeah. same thing. Oh, there's nothing to do in New York City. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> LA is so boring. There's, there's nothing that. to do in the city <laughs> of the never sleeps. What? Yeah. yeah. Maybe the problem is you're just boring. It's yeah. not where you are. Right. It's you bring the you bring the bore with you. Right. Now, I had like I have trouble going out without to try something new, but that's that's my that's uh, my, but that's my OCD, mm-hmm. my Aspergers. I have problems with social anxiety issues when there's not someone else with me to help me acclimate to a new place. And once I've gone there and I meet people and I see that it's safe ish, or you know, and I'm I can I at least have the lay of the land and I can form somewhat of a social template on how to right. behave in that situation. Then I'm good. I'm gone. I'm, I can go to the bar on my own uh, at any time. I am totally I usually with need, you on all of that. Yeah, I usually need a catalyst to someone get me out to that. But I'm mm. always up for trying something new. You know, like it's uh, other people though, and they may have that problem. And sometimes it just needs they need someone with the, the adventure spirit mm, right. to help them get out. And and that's, that's something you know. So there are those of us out there that want to. Um, but I try to make sure I don't complain about saying there's nothing to do. It's like no, I know there's shit to do. Take I have me. trouble doing I, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, have to find, I have to find someone to say, hey, huh? hey, you want to go do this? Because you're more adventurous. Like, you know, Brendan, uh, Brendan gets me out doing other things. You know, we'll, you know, go to w- Rochester and hanging out at this place or that. or And so, you know, he helps me get out there and try some new things as well. And so I have friends. I try to build friend networks. It's always easier. I try to find networks around there. Yeah. 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 I, I traveled the country uh, cleaning Mormon churches for a while. To- totally, Are they that dirty? Totally random job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mostly carpet cleaning. You'd okay. think they'd have enough wives to handle it, but you know. Uh, <laughs> Why were their carpets so dirty? A lot of bloodletting going on in the Mormon church? What's, uh... <laughs> but uh, through that, it's just boring nights of, you know, just small town wherever you're at. I mean, it was the country. Like, I mean, I traveled as far as North Carolina from here actually i mean i they flew me to texas to clean some churches sometimes but um this is a job that you can get you can go out yeah and it's become... totally a job you can get it's like touring without the music <laughs> <laughs> huh. but uh every night new town so it's just like you get to a point where you're just like well let's just go to whatever local bar is there right. and so that became a, a norm for me for a while so now just going to places is an easy thing for me because like i did it for so long because it's either that or sit at the same hotel room, kind of. You know, it's yeah. like you get, just the hotel life is so old, so fast. It's like go yeah. bowling, go do something, go to I, the bar. I, I started to try to do that. So I, I had a job. I started a job in 2009. I've been a field engineer for years out in Arizona, driving around everywhere. I started a job in 2009. I was flying everywhere. So I'd fly out Monday. I was on the road 300 days out of the year. I'd fly out Monday, sometimes fly to two hospitals a week, doing some work uh, at hospitals and stuff. So I'm, I'm always on the road, and it took me a while because of my social anxiety and stuff, but eventually I did try to start doing some of that, finding a local place or, or a, a, you know, like I went to New York one time. Everybody there, it went there, and I, I had about 12 hours till my flight. My job was done. I went to the fucking Bronx Zoo. I just walked the fuck around for no reason at all, you know, trying to find something to do. It very hard for me to do because it was – Brooke, the fucking Bronx is nerve wracking to drive through in the first place. <laughs> Don't it took, me like, it took yeah. me like 45 minutes to find the entrance for some reason. I just couldn't find the entrance and riding around and going, and, holy crap. And people just walk across the street 
anywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm in a rental car going, I'm going to kill somebody in the... I just don't want to do the paperwork <laughs> for the insurance claim. <laughs> I was in New York for 24 hours, and uh, yeah, I just oh. you know taxis and 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 buses and I'm having trans- an anxiety attack. Like, just thinking I hit about every single transportation right? you could possibly do at that time. This was before Uber, so I mean, this is you know <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, but we, I was there for uh, just a concert. I just flew in to see one of my favorite bands. They played on a ferry that went out and around the Statue of Liberty. And I was like, I got to see that. So All I right. just flew in cool. there and uh, slept on a metal grate in the airport. That's Ooh. how that happened. Awesome. Right. <laughs> I've been in a worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was on the street, right? <laughs> a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you're being drunk, you know, it happens. It was a year ago. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what ages <laughs> but no it's uh, yeah it's uh so i don't know where were we going uh, <laughs> drinking beer. good story uh, drinking my beer yeah, drinking awesome. my whiskey yes yeah, so let's uh you gotta probably round this out uh yeah, yeah you're gonna yeah. have fun editing that one oh, down to easy. time this is <laughs> easy edit it's well yeah but it's gonna be an extra but, long uh, episode yeah <laughs> nothing wrong with that i like extra long episodes. exactly nothing wrong with that at all do something different pat jesus <laughs> <laughs> really all right you're gonna go there all right okay all right shut the fuck up so uh like, where to go to find how to get to the indie go not just in not just how to fun but i mean where's it going to be i mean how are we going to find you how is everybody going to find you not just in this project but every project dude he's still trying to figure it out <laughs> he's, uh, he's got it rad, no. rad entertainment on uh on facebook is probably the easiest way to like be in touch and stay and and stay connected with what it is that we're doing we found that our biggest audience lies there um, if you want to get involved in the project, you can find uh, Rad Street Team on Facebook. That's a, a private group you can join. Uh, that is like you guys. If you're in part of the Rad Street Team, you get all these announcements early. Like any casting announcements, you get those a day early. You get you know idea. I just throw. I just pitch things sometimes in there. Just like, hey, what does this sound like? And just get some feedback. And hey, see you, you want to go clean a Mormon church? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you can you team. can. Rad Entertainment doc, or uh, Rad Entertain dot com. But there's no mint on that. Rad Entertain dot com. Rad Entertainment on Facebook. Uh, Rad Street Team. Uh, the The Undesirables is Twitter, the name of the movie. Twitter, Instagram, uh, all that. I don't really use Twitter. I mean, twi- we are on Twitter and Instagram, but we never update that. I'm terrible at keeping up on those platforms. TikTok, Twitter's still out there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, I, actually, I, remember, I use, remember, Facebook is for old people now. Facebook That's is true, for old yeah. people. I had a, That's the I hard had part. a high school student <laughs> tell me that. But yes, Facebook is for old people. It is. It's for businesses and old people now to to you know to share my kids horribly race, horribly racist and, and offending memes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My kids That's most of our marketing. Right. Call me a boomer. They'll be like, oh, I see you're on Facebook, boomer. And I'm just like, oh, dude, <laughs> I'm not a boomer. I'm a millennial. <laughs> Boomers are 60s and 70s. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Uh, but we're also, you know, with this project, and I haven't mentioned them throughout the whole podcast. We're also working with Studio 605. You can follow them, too. They'll be posting updates as well. Uh uh, Roman Josar is, you know, uh, he's going to be our, uh, um, what do we call it, like AC, like uh, he's going to be, he's going to be, you know, running camera, helping out with lighting, uh, providing tons and tons of equipment to shoot this movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, he, you know, his production company is one of the producers on the project. Uh, Michael's uh, production company is Sweet Yams. Uh, you can check out Sweet Yams Productions. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's, he's one of the producers on this project. I mean, we've got... I feel like that's going to get me redirected to porn. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Hopefully. But, you know, if you, you find get some Rad Sweet Yams. <laughs> if you find Rad Entertainment online, also on YouTube, and you, you can find search Rad Entertainment on YouTube, you can watch our backlog of just movies that we've done, but also just tons of, you know, movie reviews and just all the old, old videos that we've made over the years. We've made... I mean, we did two to four episodes a week for two years straight i mean solid so you did movie reviews now can you do you would you want to watch somebody reviewing your movie i i i when, the first thing that we'll do is have people review it we I, and I, I i welcome that i don't i don't review movies anymore because now that i've just made so many of them i have a whole different perspective on it like i've been i've been pretty harsh on some things in the past that i think that um, I think everything has its audience. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, everything's made for a reason. It all, ha- it, I mean, for, to a degree, it all, it all has its audience. Um, the movie that I'm making, you know, I welcome criticism. I'm trying to grow and learn. I mean, I mean, you know, some people just hate things to hate things. But trying to be less of a dick. I think we were exactly. talking about that. We're talking like about we were talking about restaurants yeah. and uh, or yeah. food service and all of that. You know, and you know, you just you grow up eventually, and you you, you understand that. Yeah, I was try- or even those com- comedians that do it for a long. You know, they're like. Oh, they're just the edgy, and they're just trying to start shit. And then 
eventually they grow up and going, God, I was a dick, wasn't yeah. I? Right. You know, but yeah, you grow up and you're like, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. I see what they were trying to do. I see the trials and tribulations they went through. And they probably worked their ass off on that. Like, I, I, I have a thing that is if I feel like a filmmaker hit their vision, whether or not I think the movie's good or not, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. If, if I feel like they captured the vision that they were trying to get to then I think it's a success. Right. Whether or not I think the movie's enjoyable or not doesn't right. necessarily right. matter. I think it's a success if they... If you were trying to make a movie about a pastor turning into Velociraptor <laughs> and you got it, <laughs> fuck yeah. <there> you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, that's true. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the same way we go about with the crab. I don't, I'm not going to drag on something that, you know, I, I'm not a big IPA fan, so I'm not going to sit there and, and cut down an IPA when I'm not an IPA fan. But people will do that, you know, that sucks. I'm like, well, yeah, you don't, and you we know, try. I, I hate horror movies. I'm going to review this horror movie. Exactly. It's like you're biased yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. And, and we yeah. try to not do that yeah. here. I mean, we try to. We'll tell you if the beer is bad or we don't like it, or we'll tell you if we don't it's like not it. My it's thing, not that. Really. But I mean, some of them are. Some of them are but fucking awful. Bad beer, yeah. <laughs> there are some <laughs> of them are pretty awful. It tastes like band aids and, and well, you can also and apples. You can also taste when you you know you can taste a beer and go. All right, this is a beer that was just like rushed out. There was no like thought put into right. this. They weren't really. Right. They were just like. Or they fi- They're trying to like, fix something by throwing other <laughs> shit another in name it. Yeah. You know, Vandage or you know, apples. calling a uh, yeah, calling it a sour apple beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with band aids. You if know, you drink a sour apple be- beer, are you a bad guy? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. I found the first sour beer that I like. I don't. I'm not a big sour really? person, but I found the first sour beer that I like. It's called Sunglasses Weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a mango passion fruit sour. Hmm. I, I'm trying to remember who I've, makes it. I've never met a sour I liked. Yet. I never. Really? Ne- neither I'm, have yeah. I. And I just oh, recently found I'm hit it. Or really? miss. I've had, he, like, I oh. had most of them I haven't liked, but I have had a few that I, I was like. Oh, that's really. So I mean, what I few, feel the problem. What what a lot of people have with sours is their their misconception of it. Um, and because there are subtle nuances to the different kinds of sours, whether it be a wild ale, whether you know, whether it be a uh, um, a, a Brett sour, mm-hmm. a kettle oh, yeah. sour, um, farmhouse, you know, kind of would some of them get a, like a weird like horse blanket mm-hmm. taste to them. But it's it's really all about learning about those subtleties of them and understanding that there are a lot of what you might see as sours that you're getting off the shelf of some shit, um, or what some people are putting out are are fuck up beers actually, um, or they're 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 so close to a cider they really shouldn't even be called a beer and, and certain so it's it's sours do take learning and understanding to get and understand where you like it some of them are just they're sa- they're called fruited sours and it's really just a beer that they've tossed a lot of fruit in after the fucking fact it's not part of the brewing process at all and it, and it becomes a it's basically just a fucking smoothie at that point. Well, they said we made a shitty tasting beer, so let's put some other non shitty tasting. Well, they didn't want to yeah, dump it out. Well, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, but they, yeah. they didn't want to dump it out. But there are there are people who still don't get how to do sours right because sours are very difficult lots to of, do. Lots of genres and of, dangerous. Of sours. sours are also dangerous to the rest of the brewery. So you get sites that people trying to do sour because they will infect because they're supposed to be infected. You know, they're supposed to be there, but they can infect all the rest of your equipment. Hmm. And then you have to sterilize shit again and again and again until you can start brewing regular beer again. So you get people we who used do, to do a two sour, sour beers. No, but now we do a whole sour program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've just pivoted to sours because we can't keep our shit clean, you know. So it, and and but sour, I would love to teach people more about sours, uh, you know, and because I think they're super. They can be super refreshing. They, they really can, but there are a lot of bad sours out there, so it gets a bad rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are some fucking spectacular ones. We get, we have a few. Uh, I've got a few still in my uh, in, in my fridge that I think you guys would like. Raspberry ones tend to be the best. Mm. And raspberry and pickle ones. If you can find a good pickle Pickles. one, those there are hard go. to do. Pickle sour. Oh, oh yeah. fuck yeah, it's that, beer. That sounds great. I could do pickle. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, those sour those or sour cucumber pickles. beer. You know, yeah. they're they're pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Sorry, we got off track again and kept going. <laughs> We're trying to wrap it up. Eh, you know, we keep talking. It, it happens. Keep going. That's all right. Awesome. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, so Pretty we got all the news. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll obviously when the show comes out, we'll add links to everything so you guys can see it on our Facebook page for all the old people. Uh, Brandon, will, Brandon will do a TikTok for you probably at some <laughs> point, or we'll get Jordan to do a TikTok dance. Some, so we'll do, we'll do some kind of dance number. Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. I can't keep up with it all either. It's the TikToks and the. What the hell? It's all TikTok now. By the time point. I do it, it won't be TikTok. Yeah, like, what it, are you doing TikTok for? Doing tic- for? <laughs> TikTok's for old God people. Damn it. TikTok's for boomers. <laughs> Son of a. 
God damn it. Uh, Corey, you guys, again, we, we, you, you're gonna we didn't get a lot on your band playing. Uh, uh, we, no, only, let's, let's, let's we only play, play out like it. four times a year. Well, so what? We're well, called the Saucy Dogs. playing in January. It's, it's a cover band that, that I'm doing right now. It's in January at the Elwood Opera House, which is a really cool old building um, in Elwood with lots of history behind it. It was built in like the early 1900s or something awesome. like that. So um, we don't have a web page or anything yet, mostly just because... I don't feel like putting the effort forward. <laughs> Waiting for somebody else to do it. But, uh, yeah. So well, just, somebody will do it at some point. There'll probably be an online presence at some point. It's just <laughs> not right now because I'm already playing drums and running sound. So that's Good enough. Lord. That's enough for me. Yeah, that, that's a lot. I'm trying to do yeah. both those. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm I'm, I'm playing. I'm running sound, but uh, you know it's not very good. So <laughs> I'm sure you already got you got Tony. You got more projects in the wing too after this one. Yeah. Or is this your no? You're thinking about you probably got shit. How many going of you have time, at right? a time running? Yeah. You said you got the parallels thing yeah. finishing. Yeah. I mean Turn that one's being edited right one. now. I mean I I've you know shot I don't know how many movies this year that aren't out yet. And then uh, as far as we're concerned, we do have a writers' room and we have like. Uh, we have some movies that are in the works uh, that we, we, our goal is to do, I think we're doing two feature or one feature and three shorts next year under our, under rad entertainment. And then whatever movies I end up getting picked up for to go and shoot uh, right now, I'm not doing any more movies between now and my movie. I'm not doing any, any taking on any other projects. I'm just putting all my effort into this right. one because I mean, it, it, you know, it hurts the paycheck, but I don't have the time. Right. I, yeah. I, I, I want to be able to dedicate as much as I can into yeah. this one. Uh, I do have a really cool another heist movie uh, that's a stoner comedy that I will I'm hoping to do next year uh, or at least do a short for next year mm -hmm. uh, that I'm going to be working with a really incredible director on. I'm bringing a different director on for that one because he does stoner comedy stuff and mm. we'll talk about to, that one when we get we to it. I'm trying to think. We should probably be actors in that one. I feel like I feel, I feel like <laughs> I'm going to ask a question off the air. Yeah, so I'll like, like, tell you more about that one off the air because it's it's a. It's probably one of the coolest concepts I've ever come up with, and I'm, I'm very excited. Rad about Entertainment is that now? Is this just film, or is this go outside of the film? Rad Entertainment is now just film. Okay. It used to be movie reviews and video game plays okay. and stuff like that, but now it's just film. I do we have grew, another YouTube. We grew up. I have another YouTube channel that we've released a couple of videos on that I hope to get back to to play around with. It's called Alien Broom Closet, <laughs> and that one is that's video game plays, and uh, I do a trivia show based on IMDb on, on the IMDb Parent Guide. If you want to check that out, that's I've only done I've done one episode of each. It's hilarious. I think it's one some of the greatest stuff we've ever made. Uh, I just don't have time to keep up with it, so <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come back and make more of them. We just made a couple nice. episodes, and yeah, awesome, couldn't keep yeah. up. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. Yeah. Uh, we, I, you know, we only got to one beer, but uh, it was still a good beer. Well, review, but yeah. Yeah, you know, we got one beer, but uh, you know, yeah. sometimes again, it's about independent stuff. We don't. There you go. We, we we we're yeah, we're an anti -pro prohibition uh, podcast, but uh, you know, we 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 ha we run the gamut of the industry of the craft industry, whether it be movies, music, uh, uh, food, you know, and and beer. So sometimes you get a lot of us talking without uh, beer, but hey. Trust me, there's a lot of beer being drunk. <laughs> All right. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Don't you know I'm trying to find my baby? 